being told these turtles will stay the same size of whatever container they're sold in or they live in um, when they can get over 7 to 12 inches, depending on male or female. Um, and if they are staying the same size as the enclosure that they're being sold in, um, it's giving them very bad, you know, there are just all kinds of deformities and that are going with it. Um, so the problem I'm running into is on, I do kayak tours on the island, and I think some of these people aren't even buying them for pets. They're actually releasing them, thinking that it's a sea turtle, um, mm -hmm. and they're a pond turtle. Um, the thing, though, is that if they release them in the salt water, they don't have any specialized glands to be able to live in salt water, so that's a death sentence for them. And I have found personally a few turtles, and then I've had people send me pictures of turtles they found on the beaches and that, that are the same species that they're selling. Um, species that they are selling are not indigenous um, to southwest Florida. They are more northern Florida, um, so that also creates an issue of invasive species, and Florida is already number two in the world um, for invasive species. I'm saying all this because um, there's really no good outcome for these little turtles, um, and the people selling them um, do not really care what happens to them. Um, myself and others have gone in there, can we buy a turtle? And they said, yeah. And I, I asked, do we need to... Uh, buy the little container, they sell a little container with a plastic palm tree in it, and they say, no, you don't, you don't need to buy that, you can go to the Cold Stone Creamery next door and they'll give you a cup of water for it. Um, so not only they're falsifying the information, but also they just want to sell them. Um, and the owner says that they're selling about probably 50 a week, um, and these turtles can't go on planes, um, they are, they're just using them for money. Having said all that, um, I've called Florida Fish and Wildlife. They do have a permit to sell these turtles. Um, they do have a permit to sell this species of turtle. However, there is a law that was passed in 1975 to stop the spread of salmonella um, with selling little turtles. And the law says that if the turtles are under four inches, um, it is illegal to sell them. You just can't do it. And that's a federal law. Um, and that should be enforced by FDA. Every time I call the FDA, they give me the runaround. They don't know who enforces this because it's such an old law. Um, so they are doing it illegally and legally, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? So Florida Fish and Wildlife can't really enforce it because they don't enforce the federal laws. The FDA doesn't, isn't willing to enforce it, I guess. I don't know exactly where that's coming from. So that's why I'm hoping to propose a Sydney ordin ordinance. And um, I wrote up a kind of a draft ordinance for this. Um, essentially, I don't want the store to shut down. Like, I don't want to be taken like, oh, I want the store to shut down. They just shouldn't be selling turtles, in my opinion. And I think that if they can stop the sale of the turtles, they can start selling plush turtles, and some of the profits could go to help sea turtles. You know, there's all kinds of different things they could do to fill that niche in. But the turtles themselves are 20 bucks, $10 little container. So I don't think it's going to destroy the company if they have to stop this. Um, so that's kind of my thing. I have um, all the laws printed out. If anybody wants to take a look at them, I have them highlighted where it specifically talks about the laws that they're breaking. Um, and then I also have information on the turtles themselves. So whatever I can do to help you guys ask this, because I quite honestly am just sick of finding these little turtles everywhere. Um, and I'm just trying to raise awareness of it, but I think in the grand scheme of things, one of those little things that just needs to stop. That is my two cents on that. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have any questions about it or anything that I can answer? For Where else do they sell these turtles? I mean, can't be this is the only store. This is the only one I know of on the island. There are a couple islands, or sorry, there are a couple stores off the island that, I, that um, I've heard reports of, Eve Hatfield, um, with Turtle Time. She has told me about them, but I have not investigated those personally because this is the one that is really pushing it. Um, when I called those other stores that I thought she was speaking of, she didn't know the exact name, I called them and um, they, didn't, they didn't say they sold them. They said, we don't, we don't sell those, you'll have to go to that. Oh, I don't know if that was past or present, you know, but um, the, the thing I'm, I'm worried about is that it is just this one store, but I, I, I've heard that there are others around. I just haven't found them. I think uh, an ordinance citywide to help protect these little guys and protect our native species is kind of in order for this. They probably are sold in Naples and awesome. Captiva yeah. and other yeah. places. So yeah. is this more of a county issue? Kind of city issue. 
quite possibly could be, but I think setting a precedent at the city level in saying that this is wrong and it shouldn't be done. Um, I, I feel like it's one of those things that we're really focused on sea turtles here, and that's awesome. Um, but we also have other wildlife that is, that is needing. So I agree that it, I don't think it should be done anywhere, and that's I, uh, the original law was put in place so these turtles can have a chance to grow bigger and that, but they're not native down here. You know, if they are being sold at those places to tourists, I don't see an outcome where a happy ending. And federal laws are enforced by the FBI, not the FDA. Well, I call the FBI, but it's an FDA regulation. Um, it's, or it's an FDA, it's, uh, I actually have the number for it right here. Um, I call it FBI. They said that it has to be enforced by the agency that is the one that drew up the, the actual original law and that, so. The law yeah. was driven up not for sea turtle or, or turtle preservation, but for the prevention of public health spread. Of exactly. Right. So the exactly. law goal was different. That's why it fell under the right. FDA. That makes sense. Yep. And I called, and like the FDA, like they said, maybe it should be FBI. I've, I've called FBI, CD, FDA, all, I, any acronym you can think of. <laughs> it starts with federal. I've called them, and nobody knows who to do it. Um, County Health is the one who started me going towards um, the FDA. So that's, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a big thing that nobody has any answers for. So I feel like if we can handle it at our level and make our own rules about it, then there won't be confusion. Yeah. And believe me, I'll, I'll keep going up. If we can get it statewide, I'll do it. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. So you said, um, Rob, you said that they're, they're selling 50 a week? That's, that right? what the, that's what the owner said. Because I went in, I was doing my investigation. I don't want to be confrontational. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. want to attack them or anything. Sure. I just, sure. I wanted as much information as I could. So I went in and I was, I was just asking questions about them. Um, I went in a couple of times. Um, I went in with friends have gone in to ask questions, just kind of mm -hmm. seeing how they sell, what they say, the information they're giving. Um, and I mean, these even at pet stores, you get the high schoolers working at a pet store, but sure. at least they're told this turtle goes in this size tank because it can get this big. Mm -hmm. These guys are just out there hawking them or selling them to whoever, whenever. Right, right. Um, and give it, the, the misinformation is what really set me down the path of this needs to stop. You know, if they were giving out even booklets and stuff about how big these turtles get, what their needs are, how stinky they get, because water turtles are nasty. Sure. They yeah, really yeah, are. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just, they just want it. They're looking that whenever people look at animals as an object, it gets me going a little bit. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah. I went to check it out, actually, and uh, it's... It's just a big, they got a tank, 10-gallon mm -hmm. 10, 10 aquarium, right? Yeah. And then they've got their stacks of small little plastic polycarbonate yep. uh, cages. And, exactly. Um, but actually, 50 turtles a week, I mean, that's a grand a, that's a, grand a week, and yep. it's 50 grand a, a year. So it's, you know, I can see why maybe they're defensive of, of the situation, yeah. What happens when they get to TSA? You said that they can't travel, correct? Right, right. yeah, they can't, you can't take um, animals on that that type of animal on planes of... and stuff. So either they're hiding them, or right. they they're. I mean, a lot of people right now are driving. I understand because of because of COVID and that. But it's still, I mean, it's these little guys aren't. Most likely, they're being released. But they're there for a week. They're a pet for a week, right? So. I, I mean, think they I've just seen, die. I've seen people walking around with them in their pockets. Die. Mm -hmm. I've seen people. Oh, oh you want? I got a turtle. You know, trying to pick up the pick up the ladies or guys and right, right. in uh, at the bars and stuff. So it's. It, they're not being treated like living creatures, right? Right. Um, and yeah, it's 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 sad because they're hatchlings. Those little turtles in there. I mean, they're no bigger than a quarter. I got pictures of one next to a quarter. I mean, they're mm -hmm. no, they're, they're tiny. They're, they're not small. Same, close to four inches. Yeah. yeah. And and that's where the the permit they have is kind of iffy because the permit says yes, they can sell them. Yes, they're allowed to. The permit doesn't talk about the federal laws. Um, and I just think, I, I went to look into how you get the permit for it, and it's just a little one-page paper that you fill out to get a permit to sell these things. And I just think that's appalling. You know, yeah. these are not, not for money, in my opinion. Yeah. In my opinion is always correct, so I mean. <laughs> right. So. Right. <laughs> uh, I think you're right. It's both cruel and in, inhumane to sell these turtles, and, and I think most of them die after they're sold. 
I think historically we've addressed this problem once before, and the the argument came down to whether it was legal or not. And because they say they are breeding these in captivity rather than collecting them from the wild, they can more or less do what they've been doing. Uh, I don't know that we have the authority to do anything, but we'll, uh, you know we'll certainly talk about it, and and I would pursue it. But, so what I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel, go ahead. No, 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 but I think that there's a piece of education that goes along with, we've seen, for me, sunscreen is a big issue, right? So, but what we've seen is that education can have as big of an impact as passing any law. So I think that there's sort of this twofold piece. If we can't do anything legally, surely we can start to educate people about the fact that this isn't, just as we educate people to not pick up shells that have animals in them and not to to do lots of other things that they do when they're down here on the beach that aren't good for our beach wildlife. Right. Just a matter of procedure, just so you know, during public comment, it's not really a time for conversation oh, with the sorry. speaker. If you invite him here to talk on the topic, then you can have a conversation, but it should just oh, be three minutes. Then when you get to the agenda item, you can talk between yourselves. Okay. Can I say sorry. one more thing? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Um, We've taken a lot of your time with questions. No, no, no I, 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 I'm, I'm an educator. That's, I, I was an animal keeper for a while. Now I'm an educator because that's where the change is. It's exactly right. Um, but what I want to say is, like, if we can't do an ordinance to just say you need to stop, what I'm hoping is, is we can enforce the four-inch law because it is a federal law that's already in place, and I feel like that is something we can do. Um, and I feel like that's going to start. They're going to have to stop. The four-inch turtles are big. Like, four inches is about this big. They don't have the space for that. Um, and I know this is kind of me being slimy about it. I'm kind of doing the thing. But if we can enforce that the turtles they're selling have to be four inches, there's no way people are going to think, oh, that's a cute little turtle. That's a cute little baby anymore. So the sales will drop. And it will also make them have to have more space for them. Because their permit says that they need a certain type size space. Um, and these turtles need a lot of room when they are four inches, and that's why these guys are selling them so small because they can have a 10-gallon tank and get away with having 50, 50 to 60 oh, yeah, ships in. A whole bunch in there, yeah. So if we can find out who's going to enforce that federal law, and who we can get somebody in there to make, you know, say it needs to be four inches, go in and measure any of them, they're not going to be that. I think that's going to that will, without even having to pass an ordinance, that would be able to accomplish what I'm trying to. Um, but if we can get an ordinance that says just don't do it, that'll work too. I thank you guys for your time. Please let me know thank if you, you have any questions, and I'll be more than happy right. to answer. Right. Thank you. Another uh, public comment? Oh, I saw another visitor. Nope, you guys are together. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> Witness. Good, so let's go to current items then, shall we? And first on the docket is discussion of the ordinance regarding the yellow-bellied slider turtle sales. Now we can. Now we can discuss the way. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I know with Rob, you know, it, it was a, it was a good conversation, but sometimes you may get somebody in here who you just I don't want to have that. Wanna, you don't continue want to that conversation. Just, just let them say yeah. their piece, and then well, I'm happy to follow the rules, but sometimes I forget what they are. <laughs> We're just lonely. We want we want we have good visitors, so we want. <laughs> All right, so um, it's good. You guys got the lowdown there. Uh, a couple things I thought of, and that is that um, I mean, I you know I thought about this. I saw Rob when he was on uh, Beach Talk Radio. I was aware of the situation, and um, I understand that people have a right to sell things, but I think also they have the right to do it properly, and they have uh, I think what what uh, would ensure that it was done properly. Um, certainly, I didn't know about this four-inch, uh, you know, carapace law here that uh, has to be four inches long or wide. I'm not sure what it what it is, but um, the uh, um, point I was going to make is that does the um, does the town actually um, provide the business licenses on the beach? I mean, is that a county thing? No. If you have a business on the beach, you have to have a town license. At least I do. Yoga? Permit a yoga business? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, maybe. So you, I mean, the, so especially Lee forward. County, Lee County gives us a permit, but we also have a permit from um, town as well. Um, so I would think that it would be 
both. So my thought was just from the from the town as opposed but to me just being I was just thinking of the business tax receipt. That's all I was aware of. But sure. Um, now, if you were in support of of trying to to manage the sales. Um, one way to do it would be to ensure that they uh, that the, you know, if there was an ordinance that you'd have to have a business primary purpose for your business is, uh, as a as a pet shop. Oh, so, you know that would oh, go that okay. would that right. would be That's for, for live animals. If right. you choose to sell live animals on this beach, you need to have a have a pet shop designated as a as a pet shop. And that your primary business is the care and sale of. Of animals um, you know I thought about any other businesses on the beach that that would apply to and I couldn't think of any birds other are there any, is anybody selling canaries or birds or parakeets or like bait shops yeah well that's not those aren't pets that's uh that's um, a couple groomers no that's a good question because yeah you can say okay I'm gonna buy a dozen shrimp and they're gonna be my pets and so he's selling turtle bait is that what he's a bait shop I mean you're right that's a good question Bill I mean, just a way to just a loop oh I know, I know I <laughs> know I'm not sure about the town getting involved in that kind of licensing I know that it was it was a struggle just to be able to license major business here which is mm -hmm. so you're if saying already... you license all businesses I don't we don't know if they're already in violation because the turtles are too small all we have to do is enforce the law that's there or get someone to enforce it who does, yeah. oh, who does that? Yeah, Owen from what Rob said. million dollar question. Right. It must be Chad. The, this proposal. I can't enforce. I don't enforce federal law. Okay, not Chad then. This proposal is this an actual Fort Myers? Uh, well, I mean that's what Rob provided. I think uh, what I was looking for feedback is uh, and kind of to Rob's point. What what scope? You know, would we want the ordinance to be? Would it be simply to keep it in line with? Current FDA regulations, which is the four inch, or prohibit sale of yellow belly sliders, or prevent all turtle sales, or you prevent all wild pet sales, or what? What are y'all? You know, your, it's your town. Um, what's your What's your thoughts? Isn't there a Florida law that it's allowable to sell? I mean, there was in the packet that you sent that Florida statute says it's okay to sell. It. So can we do a law that supersedes Florida state law? You can be you can be more restrictive generally uh, unless you're preempted preempted not to be sometimes like for instance with the glyphosate um, you're preempted from regulating that because Florida law says that the Department of uh, Agriculture agriculture regulates herbicides pesticides etc so we can't regulate that I, I'm not aware I mean this is all you know going to be things that we need to research but I'm not aware of a preemption it's too uh, pet sales, I think I have seen in the news before uh, different uh, municipalities regulating pet sales, so it seems like something that may be possible, but again, this is. Does it sound like step number one is to figure out the research on how far the scope, what we could do could be? Uh, I think it's just some feedback on what, what you're looking for as a town. I mean, what, what y'all are thinking, with, uh, looking to Make sure that they follow the four-inch rule. Are y'all thinking that you don't care? Or are you thinking that you want to enforce sort of uh, ordinance on all turtle sales, uh, or all reptile sales, or all wild pet sales, or all pet sales, or what? You know, what's your house town? I always think an ordinance of invasive species scale we should did. So iguanas and reptiles and snakes that are not native do it a bigger umbrella like that instead of doing I mean, if you just say this one species of turtle and they just all of a sudden they get a green bellied one or then they get a purple bellied one and you know if we do on native species regulation instead of it that far are we far enough away from being sorry Brad, you I can't think talk you need to later. define what native is um, and you can do that in your definitions in the ordinance if you want to say it, if it's if it's not native to this Florida as defined by Northwest, this yeah. this uh, authority. I limit it to non-native. Why why not just all wild? 
because it's well, but, well these but are these does, are farm how raised. How do you define how do you define this group if they're farm raised? Are they technically not wild. Mm -hmm. They'd say yeah. Right. What, yeah. If, what, if, what if your so, neighbor Bob wants to sell you a dog? Well, we should. It should be easy to tell whether an animal is domesticated or wild. I. Sorry, is that questionable? Are there? Uh, yeah, but the wild. We're saying <laughs> That's true. we're saying the wild won't fly, won't fly because it's the, these farm raised. I mean, there's already a rule. There's already oh, a law that says mean. that you can't yeah. sell okay. wild caught yellow bellied striped turtles. Right. To be farm raised. Well, so if they're raised. if they're if they're raised in a humans, they're not considered wild anymore, in spite of the fact that the they are not really taken. Differentiation, okay. yeah. I think the invasive okay. species. I mean, there's a whole list of what's considered invasive. Oh yeah, oh, I yeah. think that would be easier because yeah. wild is fabulous. I think and you're right, Greg. I mean, just just may have to look into the uh, see if the state has done anything because I know that the pet trade is a pretty big business. I mean, there's a oh, lot yeah. of places that sell Huge. all kinds of invasive, uh, you know, reptiles, and they're allowed to do that. I think as a step one. Doing the invasive species at least allow us to curtail what's going on right now and then if we notice that things start to sort of spread from there then it would give us an opportunity to say okay wait a minute we've already nailed this piece down now we need to go a little bit broader and do this piece um, the native species seems like an easy way to the first nail in the coffin because honestly we shouldn't be selling it absolutely any not any of these I right agree. I agree. Right. Right like, here. but to try to take that big of a bite of the elephant in the first round may become problematic from a either legal perspective or policy or business perspective. But if we take this non-native piece, nail that piece in, and then sort of grow from there, I think it might be an easy starting place with less resistance. That's what my is thought? Do you know what the classification of the yellow belly is down here? Because I thought it was not yeah. native, but they call it something else. I'm, I'm looking into it um, as y'all are talking. But I think it that I think you have to be careful with invasive and in something you know, native versus exotic. It means something. So Yeah, it is native to Florida. That's like I've said, it, northern it, Florida. You so know, it's you northern that map, Flor obviously southwest Florida. It's, it's, it's a USDA with you know it's it's native to northern florida so um uh, according to the sorry usgs website again that's where you know, it's being a definition hey what you're trying to accomplish you need to the other thing too is what's the with the native cousin i hear the red belly not a no person Specific, Maybe. they can probably find a way around it. We suggest that council ask uh, our lawyer to look into it. What what could be done? Yeah, what's the what's the next step? Yeah, just research maybe just do the turtle. Suggest this turtle ordinance and look into the other. I think you know y'all at least maybe defining your scope of what you're looking to do yeah. with an ordinance, oh, yeah. and then we, we can need. try and draft something accordingly. Um, and the approach. Hold on, which one is, of these? It, is, is it, it the four inch yeah, turtle? Not, is yeah, it the not do anything species? four inch species? All, all, all freshwater turtles, all, wild all reptiles, all animals. You know, it's, you know, what level are you looking to do? Oh, I believe Rabbit said that they're in violation on a number of, of you know, of, of things. Who does, who does anybody know who enforce that? The FDA? Like the FDA. FDA. No. Uh, well, that's the four-inch public health issue. We're talking about the sale of it would be the FWC, correct? They're, if, per, they're permitted, according to Rob. Permitted, but I believe. I mean, I guess I don't have that. Uh, I was looking through this. I'm not sure I highlighted the right. It sounds like on the state level they're okay. But, I mean, but do they have to sell an enclosure? Uh, no, it doesn't sound like. Closure. At least from what I read and you sent. No. So there's no there's no contingencies that's not right. it. You just you can put it in your pocket. Here's twenty dollars and I'll just walk away with it, right? That's no right. food, anything, correct? Right. Okay, so 
That's not enough. Rob, Rob's more, I'm going to defer, I mean, Rob's more the expert on this, so I'm going to defer to him. We, we, questions, uh, okay. Can we ask him now? <laughs> it's, it's your He's meeting. Oh, that's right. We can ask Rob oh. questions. <laughs> He just can't ask us. We can't discuss while he's standing at the podium. Well, technically, you should, you know, if you don't have him on the agenda, this is what I was told. To be a guest, yeah. Then they, they just come during public comment. If you want to have him on the agenda, we actually had to vote to have somebody on the agenda before. We could put be. him on the next agenda. So we could come up with a list of questions and say, okay, this is what we want to know. Right? Because I think what we're trying to do is figure out the scope. And I don't think any of us came into it with enough information to know the full scope of the problem, mm -hmm. right? So we could say, okay, wait a minute, Rob, we want you to come back and we want you to help us scope out this project, put him on the agenda, and then we could go back and forth and ask more questions and have him submit maybe a broader proposal. Could we do that? Well, the other thing you could do is you could just, you know, Channel your in your inner Shannon and just say right. what it is you want, right. that you hope to achieve, not necessarily in the in an ordinance, and then um, in that front of council and saying this is what we think we should do, and then let council decide where they want to go with it, and with the help of the attorney, understand what what we can do. What about I guess Saturday night. What if we have an ordinance? You have to have a certified enclosure for non-native animals. And have the buyer sign a certificate. Educational part. It's a little bit more difficult for them to sell them. So just say you have to have this is inform information sheet on the species that's being sold. Certified enclosure for that particular animal, like you know, four inch turtle needs this much or whatever. And do it on not the animal, which might be hard to regulate, but on the enclosure that must be sold with the animal. Administratively, that's a lot to try to. That's if. Back up, yeah. You can't just you know, do here and say you can't sell yellow belly sliders. Then. Yeah. I think we should address the problem at hand is the sliders, and then if we have another problem, address that then. If we make it specific, you're yeah. suggesting. Yeah. That's the problem. But the problem is, is that they're being released. Like, who doesn't have any iguana that comes up and down their backyard, right? If you have a, that, they have to have a certified enclosure and not mm -hmm. released. I mean, it's going to take. Well, I think there's already a law that says you can't. Yeah, I think you don't have to worry about it. Uh, I think they uh, die. Uh, an invasive <laughs> species. There's already a law, right, that you can't they're release. Not designed to be. Oh, they're not. They're wild. Of course, enforcement. Trying to enforce with 50 people with little tiny. If you can't do it, you're not selling. Yeah. 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 People have to get a pamphlet on the turtle. Mm -hmm. One of the big issues is just the mortality too. I think that you know they're toys, and then you toss them away at the end of the week, and they go up. I think Rob said he finds them. You know, he said people find them, and. Uh, yeah, but I think I think at some level we want to stop the sale of wild animals, even though these are not wild from the legal definition because they're farm raised. These are wild animals that we're trying to sell as these aren't right. domesticated dogs. These aren't cats. Right. Right. And I think we want to stop the sale of those types of animals because it's not good for our environment overall. Right. Right. Because if they get out and they don't die. What does that do to our native species? Right. Right? I have no idea. Pushes them out. I mean, right. it's for food and does right. everything else. Right. If they do die, now since sentence an animal to death, at what reason? Right? I think we want we want to we want people to come down here, enjoy Fort Myers Beach, have a great time, do everything that's down here. But does buying a have to be part of that experience. Right. Well, it's uh, if you're going to have an animal, man, I think people are, should be allowed to own animals and, and purchase yeah. them and take care of them as pets and everything else. But I think the point here is that it's, it's, it's insincere. I mean, there's yeah. no intention really of Keeping not really them. selling a pet. They're selling a, right. you know, a, they're not a pet store. It's an item. Exactly. Right. They really don't technically care how if they're 
you know, as soon as they leave, they're, they've got their 20 bucks or 30 bucks if they bought the cage, and then off you go. So where does that leave us? Can, can we, can you make an ordinance that just says we, you know, the town of Fort Myers Beach wants to ensure enforcement of the federal, 1975 federal law against selling turtles of four inches or shorter? That because of the public health of, uh, I mean, public health is in the news these days. I don't know if you guys knew that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of uh, the public health, uh, you know, consequences of all turtles, baby turtles. I, th I think you, you know, you can make a, you can write a, like, l l I've heard that, let's say the county has a law. Um, you can write, essentially, I think, the same law, then you're the one who's enforcing it. You're saying you'd... Maybe you could just take the... Rewrite it, you adopt it but yeah, maybe as a model law, ordinance, you can't and you sell just... sell turtles under four inches. A little weird, but, you know. I went to Naples. I mean, I went to, say, you know, I went to, to look up Naples, uh, and it was... I just couldn't find it. I mean, they're... Their system is horrible to try to find documents because they have a reptile. I think the Fort Lauderdale, you said Miami on that email. Um, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Naples, and uh, I can't remember the fourth one, but they have, they had ordinances against, I think it was probably larger reptiles, not specifically for the. Uh, if you could find another ordinance that's been passed by a right. municipality in Florida. And you and repeat. at least there's some assurance that it, it isn't but it hasn't been preempted. Right. Right. But we still haven't um, at least in our group we haven't found those ordinances. As one you know if one exists it applies to it. Okay. So that might be the best approach, right? But, you know, and then find one you like. But I think you know you can go as broad as you want to. You can recommend whatever you want to uh, for the you know Town Council. Right. We want to, you know, I mean, hey, it's our reputation of our advisory board here. We want to have a, well, that's pretty tight. So this, I don't think, is going to be solved today, obviously. But certainly uh, it was beneficial to discuss it so we can go back and look up uh, a little bit more now that we, uh, those of you that haven't met Rob, we know that uh, he can be a resource in helping us. We take it under advisement and uh, discuss it at the next meeting. I think so. I think this turns into a get put on our our um, town our list our to do list, and uh, we start um, we take another month to look into how we can what the best approach is going to be. Unless you guys are in are of like minded agreement to to take a single approach, and that's what I'd move then is that we put this under advisement. And uh, add it to our agenda for our next meeting. Uh, I'll second that. A, uh, Florida State Ordinance Law Changes Regarding in, Invasive and Non-Native Reptiles. It went into effect July 2020. Invasive and non-native. Yeah, I, th I think we have some definitions we have to review, mm -hmm. right. Too, right? So I don't How know which one do we this use. This particular right. turtle. Or do you have to be to be invasive and non-native? You're looking at, was it 379.372? Is that on FWCs? IFWC. IFWC, yeah. yeah. Basically, those, it um, regulates certain high-risk non-invasive, non-native invasive reptiles. A lot non-native invasive is kind of a little bit of a um, Basically, those are listed as conditional, prohibited, or venomous. And reptiles of concern. Isn't the, I mean, just in thinking, non-native doesn't, uh, invasive is... Invasive, um, natives can be invasive, so like coin vine in the dune. Coin vine's a native plant, but it's very invasive. It'll take over a dune. Right, right. So invasive speaks to the nature of it. Right. Exotic versus native speaks to where it comes from. Right. So that guard comes down to whether there's established populations of them. Some are harming the native. Work you do now. Red eared spiders are on their list. Here I'm reading it says that are non native to the state. You have a problem because parts of the state they're correct. Look at the, the, the definition. Sounds like we're in agreement that the best practice for the 
down here. Do we have any uh, objectives to pursuing it? <clears throat> Quick. All right. Well, we're united then. So, so um, you made a motion to uh, put it on the agenda. We put right? it on. Okay. Yeah. Take it under advisement and put it on the next month's agenda. Vote on that, right? We'll all come back with armed with facts and opinions. Right. Do we have to add? Do we have to vote on agenda items? But it'll be on um, agenda agenda item number ten. The set agenda for next meeting. If you're motioning for that, that's fine. We'll put it, note it. Okay. It's already on the agenda too. Good. So. Okay. Good. No so problem. we'll carry it over good. and continue the discussion. All right. Thank you very much, Rob, for com uh, for for the information. Thank you. There is another uh, public comment at the end of the meeting, but I don't you know. <laughs> no, I was going to say we've got, unless um, you could always email if you have, that might be, save you a lot of time. I guess I have your, yeah, I have your email information too. Perfect. All right. Be in touch. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Okay. So, without further ado, it's 3.40, let's go on to uh, prioritizing the committee goals to present to the Town Council for direction. We have a list here of previous uh, goals. Okay, I think I got my list here from last meeting. Do we have a formal list of what we discussed on where we... I mean, we have what's in the minutes. Um, I did not uh, pull out a, a bullet list. I didn't bring the bullet list. Um. Okay, we've got. I've got. A, I mean, I can. I can repeat what we have here. Um, we had uh, invasive species. I think Mary Rose had brought right. that up. Yeah. Uh, that that's still. Uh, I think that's important. I think we. Could. Is there something specific? You said after the uh, Australian pine was the Brazilian mm. pepper. Unless someone want, is right. aware of something else, that's a problem on the or island. Fauna, then, yeah. Okay, that's a good one. Um, Relic vessels. So, uh, Greg brought that up. On screen education. I from uh, Timber Isle. That's right. Filling holes in the beach. Something Jennifer had brought up. Uh, these all are we. Uh, we need to, we need to vote on these, like whether or not these number are number kind of thing, or do we need to just. Typically, um, the chair would give a presentation to council. You know, I was thinking maybe something that where y'all decide on what your you know, top priorities are, and that's something you present to council for direction on what they may want you to work on, or maybe they have something else in mind. Okay. But it's just more to stimulate and try and give us some focus. Okay, I, I get it. When is okay. this presentation to council supposed to happen? I believe they have one every meeting. Usually you rotate through a. There's a slot, and you can actually. You know which slot that is. I think we're behind, right? Probably here. Well, usually, pre usually beginning. It's after public comment, but before the regular agenda. Right. Um, you, you see, you can go anytime. Anytime. You present I gotcha. something. Uh, the, the most effective thing is to have something prepared in advance. Sure. Send off to Chad and Michelle, and have right. that as part of the packet. Right. Right. Um, I do know that some of the other committees have had a member of the subcommittees present at all the town council meetings so that there's sort of somebody that does the continuance of sort of focus for lack of a better term mm -hmm. um at each of the meetings that's not chad poor chad gets right. dumped on a bunch um, um but i know that the lpa has done that where they've said okay wait a minute every meeting we're going to have a rotating member at each member at each council meeting so that there's sort of somebody there that's aware of whatever the issues are for the subcommittee. That doesn't sound like a bad idea to me. Um, it's, uh, you know, just like we sort of assign the writing assignments, doing an assignment of, okay, I'm going to take this meeting, I'm going to take this meeting. Um, that way, if there's something that comes up that's relevant to our committee, mm -hmm. there's somebody there that can speak during public comment or speak during the appropriate time slot you can do that if you want um well, just so you know say we do have chad and you have me there right. the liaisons I, that did, did. I review the met the, the, the 
Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're really Packet. down the bottom of your Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> well, budget you know. all this, you know. <laughs> well, you can watch it. You know. Yeah, I like I watch it on. Yeah, I watch, watch it on the TV. Comfort sure. of my, my living room at any time. It's convenient. Usually a replay or, but we usually look at the um, end of packet just to see anything yeah. in there that. Uh, right. The basic tools I say the chair can go and talk or or you know. You buddy can if there's a specific thing. If you have something prepared in advance, then that's a good time to, you know, maybe just get on and just have a little thing saying, you know, the Marine Resources Task Force. Thing in the packet that the council has already had a chance to see. That usually is better to get some action instead of just have a conversation. Right. Or, you know, if, if um, this council has consensus, we can also have joint meetings. Which previous councils have done it better than others. When, and it's a little trickier now, but when, when I was first chair of MRF, we had a meeting with the town council and all the different chairs of all the different committees. That was useful. For now, I would, I would what say... What is the goal for today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say that, I'm not sure, I mean, from my perspective, I don't know if we need to be structured and, and assign meetings. Uh, and I mean, it's my opinion. Um, you, but I think, you know, for now, this is the brainstorming thing that you guys did before, figure out, and maybe you want to say you and add and take away. Um, and, and like I said before, you have three basic tools, right? You, you through the town council, only part of it. You can also do direct action on your own, if it's something like trash, whatever. Um, or you can do education. Or you can try to get some kind of legislation through council. Okay, so to continue on our list, <laughs> also at beach furniture, Rose had brought up, um, is this uh, concerning tur Well, I think tourism? we've gotten a handle on that now. You know, Chad suggested that we uh, take advantage of his being Johnny on this spot, and I think we've been uh, directing him to the problems, and he's been addressing them. At least that's been my experience. Okay. How okay. about you, Steve? Have you... Yeah, no, I think we're... I, I think we're do doing pretty good on that. Yeah, I think we're just going to drag it to the garbage. What, direct action? I've <laughs> <laughs> yeah. broken, chair, chair. broken up chairs been sitting on the beach for two days trying to get rid of it. I mean, wait two days. Uh, also at boat pump outs, which, another, uh, which was another one of the vice chair's uh, points. Kind of goes with the derelict vessels, doesn't it? Um, no, not at all. Actually, no. these are liveaboards, and whether or not people are are, um, are pumping them out was that yeah. the issue? Yeah. Was is, that, is there any type of um, regulation, or is anybody actually looking to see if there is a regulation, but enforcement? I think okay, okay. they're not allowed to pump pump overboard unless they're three miles offshore or further. I think it's kind of close. If you do want, I, I know that this is you know awkward. Uh, Austin is an early morning guy, right? He right. does this. Um, but one thing you could also offer to do, and I've done this with him before, is, is go out with him. Mm -hmm. I, went, I went on him once with the trash pickup, and, and you know, um, he probably makes sense to you or some, you know, or some proxy. Yeah. Reach out to him and say, like the, you know, when you're out with the hunting dipper, I'd like to go and see what you do and how you keep track of pumping and who's not. Now, I do know that um, that one of the issues is that. The, it, it, the town basically loses money if they go and take the honey dipper and go out and try to find these boats that don't move, take it out to them, they may or may not be home. They may or not, may not want it. So it becomes a bit of, a, of an expensive thing trying to chase down people to pump them out. Um, and the, uh, the, the, current, the, the, uh, the current town manager has expressed that he wants people to come to either us or to one of the um, one of the the docks, the private docks, uh, the marinas that do it, instead of having to go out and chase them around. Now the the trade off is economics versus water quality, really. Right. I mean, education. I think I don't know how many of those people know they have deep pump out. You know, education enforcement. I think. Uh, I mean, like that sailboat right off by Snook Bite. That's I've never seen it move in five years. Oh no! There's a yeah. There's a guy living in there. We call him the pirate. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. It's usually two dinghies uh, tied up to it. in the morning. You can I hear that boat growling. not moved in five years. <laughs> oh. So then are you recommending the town goes out and services him where he is because he doesn't have a... a I don't know his... Boat? I don't know the situation. I don't, you know, but I mean, and there's a whole bunch... I guess probably the further you get away from town center, those boats move less because there's probably fewer people bothering them. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of houseboats that are sitting on the on the bottom too, right off of Matanzas Pass. There, a little bit further up, maybe. Yeah, well, you know, you're talking, talking about by um, that's by um, Bay Oaks, isn't it? It's by Bay Oaks, yeah. Yeah, that that big bay. Well, there, yeah. So, um, so what I'll do, I'll actually will ask Austin ride with him next time he takes the truck out, and see what uh, <laughs> and see and ask him a bunch of questions. Or maybe yeah. maybe you'd like to go with him sure. actually. Maybe we both can go if there's no I mean, case. I think education is the key. I mean, I do mm -hmm. most of my sailing in international waters, mm -hmm. right, where it's very clear that this is what the expectation is. This oh, is sure. where you can pump out. This is where you can't. This is right. how you need to function in this sort of environment. So I feel like education might be our first step, right? especially if it's cost prohibitive potentially to send out the the boat to people who may or may not be home at the time thing but if you start to set that expectation for mm -hmm. this is what we expect from you when you are within our borders mm -hmm. then that becomes norm of behavior right and a boat call up to the city i would like to be pumped out on tuesday is that available or um, you know, you probably better talk to Austin, but I think yeah, these are, uh, yeah, if we can, the, the direction I've been given or what it's, what's been asked is if you have any questions for regarding derelict boats, regarding pump outs, that relate to the mooring field, just policies in general, put them in writing to me. I will get it to, uh, Chelsea and Austin and get answers for you. I don't know about the city, but I know all of the paid marinas. If you go in and you fill up, they will pump you out as part of what they do. Um, and I know that Fishtail does that. I know that Snookbite does that. Yeah, I know that. That's where I go, yeah. Yeah. All the marinas do that as, as part of what they do. You go in, you fill up, they pump out. I'll, I'll put a piece of it. So I don't know what the, the city does, but I think an educational piece might be our first best step. Well, I got to say, I think from a boater's perspective, if you got a head on your boat, I mean, Surprises me that's something you can think, you know, I mean, that's first thing it says, you know, you have to be off, I mean, if you're going to dump overboard, you have to be, like you said, three miles out, I mean, you just don't dump it when you're on, you know, right off the, right off the shore in a bay or. I just think some of these boats. It always surprises me. <laughs> yeah. Well, no one in the back bay can be three miles off. No one should be pumping oh, up. No, yeah. absolutely All right. not. All, yeah. of All of them should be closed. Could you, could you require I mean, a, some type of a sticker? That has to be on your vehicle to show that you've pumped out in a recent time? You actually have to have a flag on your pump-out system showing that it's inoperable within three miles. Okay. Well, well, tell so me that's again. That's the law. Oh, wow. is you have to have lockout and a, and a flag of some sort. Mm -hmm. That's when I took my captain's test. They said, you know, you got to do all this stuff to verify that you're not pumping out. Sure. That'd be worth enforcing, though. I mean, you got the you know the first aquatic preserve in Florida right here, Estero yeah. Bay, and I just I know we shudder to think somebody's pumping right you know right out into it. You know they must be. For me? They must be because they're not getting pumped out. We well, know there are boats out there not getting pumped out. That's the question. Do we know that? I, I mean, do we know that people that are that have heads that oh, are, I see. aren't getting pumped out or that they're we don't know There's that, some, but I'm we don't know that. assuming that some of them are just something overboard. Can I make a suggestion? Maybe um, if the committee wants to maybe assign somebody to the Anchorage committee, just maybe to attend it and, and what's happening and maybe ask, ask these questions and maybe get answers. Yeah, that's a good one. First step. That's a good one. It seems like, I mean, it's it's more of their purview. Mm -hmm. um, and also any, any questions you'll have regarding pump outs, derelict vessels, Marinas, could we go as boards. a guest, or could you go as a as a, a member of this town? I mean, you're that's what the you're well. I mean, opposed to you have three minutes. I mean, uh, how do you with the yeah. Anchorage? Yeah, how do you have that discussion? Capacity. You get invite you get invited and 
and uh, you're a guest, and they, they allow you to, to, to get more than three minutes. This, I guess is what I'm saying. So what's the protocol there? Actually, Bill probably knows. You, you can, you know, I would, I would start a dialogue with the chair. Mm -hmm. Well, Kathy Light, I think, is the chair of the anchor. Yeah, she actually she can probably answer all your questions herself. Yeah, I mean, she's, give her a holler. she's up on it and, and say, you know, I'm sure they probably share your concerns. So, um, you know, you can you can go that way and then see if there's it's worth having it go into their meetings. I think that you know, kind of their jurisdiction is the mooring field, and this is well, this is outside the mooring field. Right. You know, by all means, talk to everybody you can before you. Yeah, I think that would be a talk. great start. So what, uh, I guess we don't know, we'll, I'll contact them, and then I'll let okay. you know what I find, and, and but, uh, if we can coordinate a date, then go out there. Anybody else wants to join, too? Well, I think you probably want to avoid having more than one member go out on the trip. Yeah. Sunshine. Yeah. Uh, you may probably discussing something you may be voting on, so that gets you. Okay. Guys. Okay. If you have any questions, by all means, send them in. Okay. okay. How often does Austin go out, Chad? Every day. Every day. Oh, so there's no problem. Take the pump, that takes the pump boat out every day? Uh, maybe not every day, but he's yeah, out there. there's another dude that was doing often. that for a while, younger blonde hair guy, I think. The last time I remember we got invited a year ago or something. Pretty okay. Often. So onward and upward. Um, the two I had are on, were ongoing, I think. The, although that's, that is a, something I had for my memory report just on... Um, I know that was a different uh, that was a different point here, but uh, it was street lighting. I can uh, include that on my members report, I guess. The other one I thought was um, let me finish what we have, and then we can add. Yeah, speed reduction zone, which is ongoing. We really don't have anything to do there. Um, that's, that's maybe coming up soon. Um, fertilizer ordinance outreach. So uh, we've got the new fertilizer ordinance. The question was, is what, what, how can maybe we can help? How can we help with the outreach aspect of it? Because I think it's everybody's best kept secret still. I mean, until we communicate something, we can help the the, um, the new um, marketing lady or an officer information. Yeah. Um, but is that? Sounds very good. good. One, okay, good. Got that one. And um, I think that's all we had. Good sheriff driving the CW. I don't think that's really a, a project. Say those are the ones I had written down from the last meeting. Meetings, uh, no, last meeting. So does anybody have? Are there, are there any other issues that we want to? So I also have artificial reef from bridge rubble, um, fishing platform on the new bridge to make sure that's a priority. Right. Talk Actually, about I skipped those. I saw those, but uh, but you're right. I guess those are. I mean, those are ongoing. Yeah. Um, we have Miss Mary Rose exotic vegetation education. Yeah, we heard about that. sunscreen, um, holes on the beach issue, derelict vessels, pump outs, fertilizer ordinance outreach, turtle sales would be new, um, and uh, the lighting issue. The other, um, does anybody else have any anything else to add to that? Anything that, that they'd like to see looked into that, that where we could help ongoing projects? I had, I had one and that was just simply the, um, and I'm not sure we're the right group to do that, but this, uh, the roadway landscaping at, um, is that something or would they go to the garden? Uh, I don't know if there's any salt in the roadway landscaping. <laughs> Salt's marine. That's that's true. I mean, it's. I guess you could. You know, maybe if you're 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 one. Actually, to... I I I'd uh, I'd argue that there is salt, plenty of salt in that uh, <laughs> in that earth, that soil that's in there. Roadway landscaping. H two O. What are you thinking, Steve? That it should be native plants rather than the I mean, sod absolutely. they're putting in. They can't put sod in there. Yeah, I, mean, I think that. I, yeah, I think they, um, I don't know if they, the anything else. I know they've looked at the $800,000, I think maybe the county's going to. Yeah, it, it's actually in front of the council now. Um, the 
the proposal was that the county has a budget for what they're doing and they'll give that money to us if we take if we, we can do what we want in gratuity the reality is in northern part there's less concrete is considered invasive there's not much you can do with that um yes. there's in the middle section there's a little tiny strip again there's not a whole lot you can do with that except maybe change the type of grass right that's native um or ground cover, ground cover yeah. um that doesn't spread out too far and get on the sidewalk and then bike path and everything else uh, then down south further south there's more room yeah and there are a couple of pockets here and there i know that by the whale there's a little it was a rock that i think is part of the right of way i'm not sure if it's controlled by the county or the town so that's you know if, if if the council wants to take that over then and we'll have control of it. Otherwise, you're just kind of advising the county. Right. You won't listen. Gotcha. All right. Well, if there's uh, anybody else, otherwise, that's uh, going to be our list to work off of. We know we how far that eight hundred thousand dollars would go, Bill. Um, Is that just enough to put it in, and then it's all us? Yeah, it means that you yeah. know we're mowing that strip. Oh. That goes down and I, I i see the guys go by our house they also go through with water trucks but you know i think the idea is getting something that doesn't need water right of course, yeah um you know of course and it would take over her little strip give <laughs> her a chance um some ideas but uh we do decide to plant then we'll probably be experts and some would eight hundred thousand dollars do that cover really it's just further down south you know, we're, we're, you go from a you know 50 or 65 foot right away where you don't have a whole lot of room down south it gets to be like 75 80 feet yeah oh, i think it's room for ashes and trees right um they're still going they're going with a crown drainage system where the the storm water collection will be under the sidewalk so then you have stay away from that so there's you know i haven't seen a a, a good layout of saying where there's room to do That sounds like a big job. And do you know, Mr. Councilman, do you know if the, um, the town was involved, used their streetscape, master streetscape that was built back in 2000 that Chad shared with us? I mean, did, did that go in any of the design or anything when they decided to build that road, or was that the county's project? Uh, so, I, regardless uh, of whether the town. I mean, right away, is pretty, right away space is pretty dear. I think the Department of Transportation is the one who did it. I mean, they, and the county really hasn't been particularly generous with anything on that road as far as you know for what they've done um so you know lighting kind of falls the same thing right and you know there, there's a lot of a lot of problems with, you do there's a lot of things you can't do with the road right i mean on one side you have power lines you can't put any trees into the power lines on the other side you know you still have doing triangles for safety you know you can't put very high vegetation anywhere so there's you know, you're relatively limited, except for the far south. Okay. I think that's our list. Ed. Um, so uh, you had mentioned prior prioritization of it. Uh, is that something the council wants to prioritize for us? Or do we prioritize? The more, the more, the more, the more work you do before you present it to the council, the better. You will look, and the more effective it will be. <laughs> well, let's take a minute and prioritize. <laughs> Are we? From a sunscreen perspective, I'm happy to pull together a slide or two on why it's important for us to start educating people on the type of sunscreen that they use, that are in those sunscreens, and why it's important. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously, there's nothing we can do other than educate. But I'm happy to start there mm -hmm. in a slide or two. My little pet project. Mm -hmm. Do you have a short list of maybe like businesses that are selling this, the friendly stuff only versus those that kind of just sell everything? Unfortunately, I believe. Right? So there's 13 chemicals that we want to really avoid. Right? And most of the major sunscreen companies have avoided the top two. Right, and inserted in two other ones that we don't want 
in there but aren't necessarily on the list. So there's not necessarily any one business that's doing anything different than anybody else. But I think it's one of those things where we need to start educating the business people to start with on these are the sunscreens that you want to bring into your business. These are the sunscreens that you want to promote. How do you incentivize them to do that? What do we bring to the table? <laughs> um, well, I'm a motivator. Obviously, I'll they're business that. people, so they want business. How do we how do we generate business for them? Yeah, I I think part of the way that we do this is it ties into everything else that we're trying to do. We're trying to educate people on how to use water effectively. We're trying to educate people on how to not sell animals that they shouldn't be selling. It, it sort of falls under that whole larger piece of things. Um, I do have a plan. Um, it's not very popular um, with how to motivate them to say, hey, wait a minute, you guys are actually taking stuff that's not good for humans or the marine environment, and you're pushing it out on the market. Right? And I don't want to guilt you into necessarily behaving appropriately, but there is that avenue to go. And I don't know that that's where we're at right now, but I think from an educational perspective, if we look at what's happened in Hawaii, just educating people on, wait a minute, it's not just two chemicals people have banned, it's 13. There are certain companies that have only taken away two chemicals, not the other 11 that negatively impact both the ocean environment and the human environment. Don't you think you want to get those out of your shop too? As a step one, before we go to anything that's a little bit more aggressive, that would be my take on it. The step, but somebody wants to be a little more aggressive than I am. Fine with it, but my my first piece would be education. Your education and say, hey, wait a minute, guys, this isn't the right way to go. Are you asking businesses to maybe pledge to do? Yes, I would one, love to two. see that, but I don't want to cross that line because I understand that we can't say and create a sunscreen ban. We as a town can't. Right. But we can ask companies and we can ask businesses to pledge not to have the sunscreens, but I think that you need to be educated first on what that means. We're writing an article on sunscreen and we're to, to do the right thing. Colorado's done it. There's already a pledge out there that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we could mirror that. Um, we could mirror a couple of different things. I, I love the concept. You know, I'm happy to go door to door and say, no, you can't have this. Way. You know what I mean? But I don't know that we're quite there yet. Everybody else think? Well, I think um, one of the benefits, like, because you asked what, what kind of will make the businesses on board with this, and one, they can advertise it. Sure. For the most part, everyone wants to see that. So people coming down here and visiting, you know, I would, if I saw this educational piece in there, I would be more enticed to buy that sunscreen if I was uninformed previously. And the other thing, too, is there are plenty that are, really affordable. So it's yes. not by any means that we're switching out of some, there are some that, yes, are more expensive, but a lot are comparable. If you go on the EWG and the ones that are rated as a one, a lot of them are very comparable to like your horrible, like, what is it? Hawaiian tropics or, you know, <laughs> one of those, right? Um, with those chemicals that Renee is talking about. So I would think for the most part, yes, of course they want the business, but they want to not harm from Mars Beach, right? We want to keep people coming back and have a, um, you know, a healthy own. So there's, there's also most of the companies have a fair amount of marketing material that they're willing to hand out, kind of mm -hmm. along the lines of this is the type of seafood you're supposed to eat, type of seafood that's not uh, is good for Monterey you. Bay, yeah. Right, uh, Georgia Aquarium, I think, has done an amazing yeah. job yeah. at putting out those sort of like business card size, you know, eat this, don't eat this, and this is the reason why. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of sunscreen companies that have done the same mm -hmm. business card size. Definitely. 
information that says, wait a minute, this is why you want to use this type of sunscreen, not this type of sunscreen. Um, and here's the benefits for it. So, it and, and they give it away for free businesses. So from that perspective, it's a benefit for the business. But yes, I would personally love to see all of the businesses on Fort Myers Beach pledge to only have sunscreen that's marine safe, safe for humans, safe for our marine life. And that's the only thing that they sell. Because what happens is that most people in the age of Frontier and Allegiant, right, people come down here with nothing that's bigger than three and a half ounces. They come down here and buy everything that they need, and once they have an, a chance to experience something that is marine safe, and they go, wait a minute, it's no different, it's no price different than what I'm used to. It doesn't feel any different. No, by the way, I didn't get burned when I was sitting out on the beach. I'm going to take this back home because all of those homes all ultimately dump into the ocean, however you trace it. Are you creating like a MRF certified list of sunscreens that you can put an educational? Maybe just copy the EWS, yeah. EWG, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, but create it local and say, hey, wait a minute, we're looking for people to pledge to going on to this. And even if the, maybe they have the other ones that you don't like, maybe you just have a list. These are, you know, can you put this up, you know, as an education piece to your customers? This is the, you know, mm -hmm. MRF certified list of uh, Fort Myers Beach Marine Resource Task Force certified list of what's safe for you and for our marine environment. Yeah. And that would be, as a step one, I think that would be a great step. I what do you think? Certified? Right. You recommended, but not certified? Oh. We're not in an age to certify anything. Right. We can recommend. But we could also suggested. point to those that yeah. or those sunscreens that have been certified. Uh, there's a couple that have been Lancy and Ocean Protected certified. Right. There's a couple that are out there that have gone through the certification process for those organizations. I agree. We're not a certifying organization. We shouldn't get into that business. We could create a list that say these are the approved. Uh, approved recommended. isn't the right word. Recommended. 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 List of certified products. Yeah. Recommended list of certified. Oh. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sunscreen's a priority. Yeah, I put that down as number one. Sorry. Yeah, the, <laughs> the enthusiasm is just infectious. <laughs> just. <laughs> well, and it's a really big deal. And then down here, we're wearing it constantly. So. Yeah. Sure. It's a really yeah. big deal. And then one thing to include in the uh, the recommended is you know, materials. It's things like tuna skin, and there's you know I I usually wear a shirt, even though I know it's super geeky on the beach. Yeah, it's getting more popular. Oh, and a hat. Uh, shirts, yeah. Yeah. No. I think that though I think that that's important because the goal is not to. I think initially when some of the sunscreen question came out, it was like, well, wait a minute, we don't want to tell people to not wear sunscreen because of melanoma being such a big right. cancer kind of opponent. And there's a lot of ways to prevent sun exposure. Right? I always wear a hat. I always wear a rash guard. Right? Typically, a tuna skin. Um. But you always wear some of these other things, and then the pieces of you that are exposed, and you can you can apply a sunscreen that's appropriate for the marine environment, not necessarily one that is spend a lot of time on boats. Any spray doesn't necessarily work well, um, regardless of the contents of the bottle. And there's a lot of things that you can do past that. But again, it goes along the lines of what we've been doing all along as part of this committee. Uh, signs that are on the beach, things that we talk about with turtles, education component of what we do, because that's the limit, the limiter to what we've got going on right now. Renee, is there someone on the beach who is Selling this safe sunscreen, and it's their major seller. We could make them our Murphy winner, and put all of this information, and that could be our first blurb. Uh, give me thirty days, and I will find you one. Because then we can introduce this sub. Uh, be safe. Yeah, that's a good idea. As I was part of our how Murphy, to get, how to get publicity, and that's a good. Yeah. 
Give me 30 days. I know that there's a lot of companies on the beach that are working to bring in green safe sunscreen. I can't tell you off the top of my head. Then we can have them say it's not any more expensive and it's this and it's that and it's mm -hmm. that and please come and buy from me because yep. it's good for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Give me till the next meeting, but yes, I can get you what you want. Perfect. Or Sarah and I can work together and get you one. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, well, I got that listed down. We'll put that as the first uh, first item then, just uh, for the sake of time and moving down through our Sorry. agenda list here. Oh, no, no, I told you, got me all worked up. Um, so as we continue on here, we've got uh, what should be, what do you guys want as a second? Um, about the vessels, the pump outs, the turtle sails on the beach, invasive species, I think is a, is a big one. one. Holes on the beach, maybe not, uh, that's, I think it's really important, but to prioritize these. Uh, I think the fertilizer ordinance outreach is a big one um, as far as it has to be done. There's no, we, the amount of work that was put into getting that, that fertilizer ordinance um, written was, was a lot. So it'd be nice that it was followed now and we started to enforce it. So, Do we have a Murphy winner for that too? Uh, I think the way you're thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Who's the big, who's the big landscape companies? I don't know, there's a bunch of them, I'll tell you that. We, you know, um, Chad, have we sent out any, any letter or anything about the fertilizer ordinance with the, the water bill or whatever? Uh, I don't. I know there's something that goes out every season, right? Uh, I don't know, let me, let me rephrase that, I don't know. Okay. Find out. I know that like every season when it starts, they send us something. That okay, it's, it's a rainy season, no yeah. fertilizers. I know the county's doing a good job. I see a lot of TV ads and stuff for them. Uh, about fertilizer. We want to do the specifics about what our, our ordinance now says. People know the changes. Right. But maybe yeah. the fertilizer and the water or the water education piece go together. Yeah. That would make sense. I mean, I don't think the water ordinance has been passed yet. Correct. The new. On your agenda, or um, we've approved parts of it, but it's coming back for uh, I think additional detail. Okay, that would have to be passed before we did them. Obviously, communicated the. Yeah, but those two feel like they could be sort of back to back. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, That's if, not, if we'll not together, we can use the same mechanism to get the information out. You don't necessarily want to put everything in one right. mailer, but they're, they're unrelated. But that's a way to do it. A way to communicate. One way. Right. Um, so again, I'm trying to prioritize these. <laughs> if you guys want to toss me, it'd be great. What uh, What else is is? Maybe it's there. Obviously, I'm passionate about sunscreen. Right. Yeah. Um, these are. I mean, what list. are the other topics that that the committee is really passionate about? But the the the. the Light. I see as far as prioritizing it. Yeah. That, I mean, that's all we have the list now. It's just a matter of I just need to put one through 11 or 12 down on there. I, I think lighting sure. is a big one that's going to be the ongoing. Council is going to weigh in on it. It's what's important to them. That's yes, the point. what's yeah. important. But you have to have lighting up there because that's something that's you want to keep pressure on and you want to keep keep it visible. Street lighting? I don't know what uh, we would. Rolling, actually. Um, that RFP is out, actually. I looked online and. Is there, yeah, is there anything for us to do on that? Chelsea, um, Chelsea's done a great job getting that out. She didn't close, I mean, technically didn't close the loop with us saying, okay, we, but she put all our suggestions in there. I think the suggestions from the Public Safety Committee as well, and she has it out. I think the bid opening is on September 29th. We bid um, meeting for, on, uh, I think, September 10th. I suppose for any bidders to come in and ask questions uh, and get clarifications on the RFP. And, uh, I mean, it's rolling fantastic. But, point, Bill, I think it's, uh, nobody's thinking about that now. There's Bay Oaks, there's Bayside, there's all these projects, capital projects going on, and this one was, to, you know, to burn that, the, the, the town down that we didn't have safe street lighting for a while when Bruce, I mean, you know, when Bruce was here, that was one of his big priorities, and he made it known, so, and yeah. his benefit actually because it is a problem right now 50% of the street lights are out during turtle season that's not safe 
Well, and again, people are people need light too. So this is a high priority to me um, as far as uh, as a capital project. I think that just because just it's rolling doesn't mean you should take the eye off it. No, oh, so how, I mean, to, 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 to benefit from your experience, Bill, how do you bring that up? I mean, again, this is a sort of a priority list you want us working on. How, how would, would they select that to say, well, we want you to put that on top? And that's, there's nothing for us right now to do, I guess, as far, except for give it exposure. Do you understand what I'm asking you? Just, I think, just saying, make, letting the council know that you want to be involved in the process. Okay. But you are. I mean, it's already, it's already going that way, but just right. let them know that you're still engaged, you know. Right. Okay. I'll add that to the list then. Did you get that too? Can I make a suggestion? Maybe everybody choose their number one, just to, in order to prioritize, you choose your number one thing, and at least that way we'll have. I prioritized five, immediately. Five, 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 <laughs> at least five. I can do it half and half. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, just. Well, we've got sunscreen education. It's a big one. There's two for that, I know already, between Sarah and Renee. Um, Mine would be pump out. Pump out, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a big one. Um, two. Sunscreen. But you, Mayor Rose, I mean, invasive species. I think yeah, just get, go, let me go with the invasive pines, species, I guess. Pepper and <clears throat> but doesn't that also take in the slider, the slider turtle? We could, sure. We could. I mean, that's its own line item right now, but those right. can be together. When we right. We don't have to just make it plants and animals. Yeah, I think animals. the difference is, is that the invasive species, you've got, I mean, I don't mean to, to, to just, uh, you know, make a suggestion on your original topic, Mayor Rose, but, um, for instance, Annabelle has an ordinance that you can't, you can't have it on your property. You can't have, I don't know how extensive it is, but they have a list of invasive species correct, that you are not allowed to have on that island. I think there was some preemptive law in the state saying that the towns can't dictate what gets planted. Uh, I mean, I remember that from Shannon, I think. She was, was digging deep through all that stuff. was some kind of preemption with that, which she made... She was a Brazilian pepper yeah. eater. You know, just because you can't pass an ordinance doesn't mean there's nothing you can do about it. Right. Correct. The education piece is... Uh... A, a lot of people don't have a clue. That tree in the yard is a Brazilian pepper or a Australian pine or whatever. Right, right. Those pink, uh, those uh, purple guys too. Invasion. Can't think of what those so are. So it's a collective. Yeah. They should. Right. So what else can we do besides articles in the paper? Uh, I think there's a lot more we can do. I think there's a fair amount of social media. I think there's a fair amount uh, that we can do with short-term rentals and uh, hotels. Oh, just educating people. Education has a bigger power than I think we're giving it right now. And I think maybe we need to work more on the education side of things because we can't necessarily legislate things. We can train people to not want to buy a turtle when they're on the beach or not want to wear a certain type of sunscreen or when they're down here for six months out of the year and they go to Home Depot, not choose this plant. Just so you know, though, I mean, I find education very challenging here because you have residents, you have snowbirds, you have vacation renters, you have day yes. trippers, you have people from all over and almost owners. everyone is a, is a different target. I mean, the signs on the beach access are good because people see them any kind of visitor, um, but then if you're talking about someone who has like vegetation, it's a more targeted thing. And I don't know how how proper it would be, how it would be accepted if you, you know, if you go around and you see a Brazilian pepper to you know know the address and then the, we'll send a letter saying you have but an invasion tree. I don't think tree. you have to necessarily go about it that way. I think you can go about it from the other way and say, hey, wait a minute, when you come down here and you're only down here for six months out of the time. Here's what you need to think about while you're down here on this seven mile island. Right? We function very independently from the rest of the world in the seven mile island. And I think it's easy to say, hey, wait a minute, while you're down here, think about these things. Right? Whether it's a mailer, whether it's social media, whether it's an article in the newspaper, it's probably all of the above and some other marketing communication avenue that I haven't, I'm not smart enough to think about. 
But I think it's important to talk about all of those things. It's not important to just say, wait a minute, we can't reach these people because they're only short term down here. I think we have the ability to change perspectives when they're down here for only a week. Maybe I'm naive. No, Maybe I I'm was just <laughs> I was thinking, and Mary, and Mary Rose will attest that there yeah. are some people who, you know, they they want to bring Ohio down, stick it in their yard. Yeah, but we can train Ohio. I come from Ohio. We can, <laughs> we can train Ohio. And, you know, or I'm, I'm picking on Ohio, but just somewhere yeah. else. But it's it's harder to train them, very much harder to train them, but it's not impossible. I think also invasive animals is going to be one group of people, predominantly tourists. Yes. Of plants, I think we need to make sure it's the landscapers who do most of that, and make sure it's in Spanish. Who doesn't have a who has an English-speaking landscaper? <laughs> I mean, I mean just make sure it's in Spanish. I mean, in hitting the landscapers, for information for the invasive plants and the tourists, the invasive species, animals. A lot of the landscapers, um, I'm not sure what in Lee County, if it's required, but a lot of them have to do continuation credits. But it has a lot to do with the chemicals and things they handle, then? Uh, it's, it, it can, there can be, there's different classes. There's some on mangroves, there's some on uh, fertilizers, there's, uh, I know that. Uh, some plants, probably. Landscapers are probably more the, the more educated. Mm -hmm. Um, bunch, in my opinion. And you know, and part of it too, maybe you could come, maybe you could work with the landscapers and come up with ammunition that they can give their customers. Yes. It explains it in a way, you know, they, because maybe they are qualified to identify some of the key invasive sure. plants, but that, that maybe they're never good at communicating or it comes off as though they just want my money. But if we can come up saying, you know, like if they find a Brazilian pepper, give them a of right up on the Brazilian the pepper and program. <laughs> why and why it's bad and uh, mm -hmm. finding funding. I'm not sure. I know that Shannon was into something, but it didn't. I don't think it panned out. Um, be able to pop pop it. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the I think it was the trees. There may be, you know, I mean, the town may be willing to fund some of that too, to a certain degree. Not like they got a hundred foot, you know, Brazilian pepper and put in a hundred foot oak tree or something. Right. Well, I remember, I think she was looking into the Arbor Day stuff and trying to get, you know, plants and stuff like that. Yeah. So, foundation and like that. But right now, we're just still prioritizing. So, I think all these actually have merit. And I think once we get the direction from council, then we'll really decide how we do it. Um, so, if you guys can help me get through this list. <laughs> Are you killing me? So we sort of grouped them already. We're yeah, the I guess the invasive species is up there. We've got the boat pump out, sunscreen education, obviously. Uh, we've discussed the fertilizer ordinance. And um, and then the rest will... Um, so the Big Carlos Bridge, and those can go at the very end because that's not going to happen for a little while. Uh, so I'll put those down at the bottom. Um, Lighting could probably, yeah, that can go anywhere. I mean, that's, that's actually imminent, so. so. That'll be a continuing project along with the uh, all the improvements mm -hmm. and all of these things. We are going to be involved in everything. Yeah. Yeah, there was one other item I missed, actually. I just saw my note, was uh, dune education. This recently had, a, it seems like a spat of conversations with people that don't, confused actually what they they can do one of them has been a long time owner and I was completely surprised that they didn't understand you know whether they could have a path to their you know through them and path and um, and we've had people recently <laughs> taking skid loaders out to the dunes and just plowing through their dunes um, I think there's three of them that's occurred this yeah. summer already right we have a few coming up um, on August 20th magistrate meeting, and there's been, um, I just got a few reported um, this week, last week, and uh, I have, yeah, a, a few love letters to write. Really? So people are doing it now? Meeting stuff? Yeah. Time of year. Um, 
Oh, the, the three that got reported, it seems like they're, it was some time ago. Um, they're all adjacent properties. But I have seen a recent, it looks like there was some um, herbicide sprayed on the frontal dune where there was a uh, it's taken out, um, definitely skid steers. Or whether it's the landscaper um, that just kind of did it without the owner's knowledge or whatever. Um, yeah, there's definitely a... Dune, dune management, I think, would be a great, great priority. Dune education. All right. Now let's move that kind of toward the top then. Yeah. That would be my then. We lose our dunes. We lost our beach. There's, yeah. there's a lot of property owners that just don't want dunes. Right. My next door neighbor, who is a part of the uh, the original um, beach. The winner. Uh, that neighbor. The one um, on the north side. No, the other side. Okay. Other side. Yeah, but she was she was part of that uh, that demonstration project, and uh, her daughter kind of took it over, and she was. You get all the cord grass, comes, and all you need is oh, one cord. Cord grass, did you say? Yeah, that it has a different name, but which uh, comes up, and then as soon as there is a good high water event, it just goes away, and you just can't handle being submerged for very long. Um, but we haven't had that for now, you know, a year and a half, two years. So it's there, and she was trying to, you know, really wanted to get rid of it. She said that. People of VRBO said people just want to see a sand. White sand to the beach. Where were these three? They, were they, were the beaches really wide? Um, so the, the latest three are on the south side of the island. What I saw was uh, at Aberdeen. Is that where it was? Yeah, down in that Aberdeen area, that whole area. These kids here start Couple driving pictures. around, made a big path, and then cut into the Moby mat and started driving. A mess. Lenark or Aberdeen? Maybe it's Lenark. Aber I don't know. I can't. Well, I think it's Aberdeen, but I think there's also some at Lenark. It's that whole area that people have gone through. Dune diggers at Lenark. <laughs> there's a number of them. It's a different story, but well, education there too. But Anyway, I haven't. Uh, I thought I'd go through all those documents and stuff to figure out first before I tell you again. Make sure you know what the what you know what's allowed and what's not allowed. I mean, it helps to understand. Yeah, well, I'm it's uh, waterward of the EC line, um, environmental environmentally critical line. Uh, and there, so there's the 1978 Triple CL, which the state no longer uses, but we use as a zoning, trying to establish the environmentally critical zone. Um, you can't plant um, non-native, non in vegetation, as well as uh, you can't destroy tolerant vegetation in the You can't maintain it. In fact, I think that's what you told me, that there's maintenance you can do. Well, so that's the tricky part. There, We have a document that was um, approved by council years back for the first beach renourishment or the one the renourishment um paid back uh created managed beach zones in the northern area of the island where um i can i'll provide this document for y'all uh, it's basically managed beach zones where it encouraged property owners to um create dunes um and it was kind of a quid pro quo to sign on to the renourishment to get sand I believe it's been fairly well received for most of the properties. Uh, I think the issue with dunes is is not necessarily the dune itself; it's just the regulation that comes along with it. The property properties can um, manage the dune, um, have a dune. It's better for uh, resiliency for storms. Time spring tide flood floods. So that that was approved, but again, that was the northern section. That permit with FDEP has since expired. It also allowed for, um, you know, exotic removal within the dunes, um, and also some invasive native management for corn vine. Bean. And spurs. How much are native? But it's just. Uh, 
So it allowed for that. It also allowed for, um, in order to maintain the configuration of the dunes that were established, you know, within two feet of uh, the dune, they could rake, um, whereas it's typically 10 feet. So it's two feet. It was. Again, that, okay. that you know, it's um, something that, you know, we need to look at. I think it's a good tool to encourage property established dunes where there's no frontal dune. A quid pro quo that they can manage the area and that we all right along those lines i think we should discourage the raking of the beach actually in, w in the wider areas there where they've continuously every couple of weeks go through with a big machine and rake it so it's absolutely flat it's completely abnormal it's not a natural beach at all and what happens as a result when we get a good rain, it, it ponds up instead of draining. Now, I, we may not be able to stop them, but I think this goes along with the education. If we could possibly turn these people's minds so they understand that they are harming themselves rather than doing a good thing. The raking come fr coming from the bigger hotels, or is it coming from the individual the individual the property owners. Both, okay. I mean, both condo associations and... Yeah, like they had some rains a while ago, the Diamond Head, their whole volleyball area was a big lake. Exactly. Yeah. And I know that some of the places like down south, there's a couple where they, you know, inside where everything else is doing, they, they see a little square where it's all raked out and those become ponds too. I mean, you have cleaner seagulls because of it, but other than that, I don't see it. You know, I know that we had some turtle nests that were completely submerged for more than a full day. They, they started off on dry sand, but then because the area had been raked so much, once it rained, it didn't drain. They just, the water sat, they all drowned. Terrible to see, and it's, uh, it's human cause. Okay, so. hear that. You're going to educate them, right, Steve? Let's move on. Shall we? Anybody else have anything else on the uh, prioritization here? But, um, on the top here, we've got the, the uh, sunscreen education, boat pump-outs, fertilizer ordinances up there, invasive species, dune education, we've got the street lighting program, um, on the beach, uh, holes in the beach is a little lower, derelict vessels a little lower. Um, turtle sails on the beach, it's a little lower. And, um, and then did we, are we adding beach raking? I guess they're within their rights. I don't know that there's anything we can do. Well, let's put that under the information. Yeah, again, it's... Yeah. Well, um, I mean, Educate one, two, people. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven now. Oh, add it to the dirty dozen. Make it the dirty dozen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> done. All right. So oh, it's four thirty-seven. I say we move on. We've got one more, um, one more item here on the agenda. Creation, uh, two more, but creation of the waterwise education. Just look at that at all. I put a, mm -hmm. I put a little. Uh, Yes. Are you responsible for this, Steve? I put a few slides together just to collect my thoughts and just sort of think. And, and from from my understanding of what we talked about the last the last meeting, um, I mean, I can start if you want. Talk you through it, but basically, it's a mailing insert, I believe. Right? It's a threefold that'll go in, mm -hmm. and so it's meant to be sent in a first class envelope with your water bill. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to create a threefold uh, mailing insert. So for me, um, I felt like I was thinking a little bit about ads, ads driving, um, beach driving project he did, and and I saw what the uh, what he did. I saw what the FWC did, and I liked his because it was just absorb it by looking at it. You don't want a lot of a whole, a whole bunch of text, and and so. Well, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but first, that if you want to get through to somebody, usually it's through their pocketbook. But for me, I thought, well, 
Why don't we take a look at where the water goes? And I thought this was a 2015 consumer reports um, saying, let's say 29% is lawn. It'd be nice to find something in Southwest Florida. I couldn't really dig anything up there for water usage. Maybe I could, if I talked to the, the water uh, department, but basically where's our water going? The average water bill and say, okay, so lawns, if it's 29% and you have a, let's say it's 30% and you have a $200 bill every month, then it's $60, right? A month you're, you're throwing on your lawn uh, or your landscape. And, uh, and then actually tie do uh, dollars and cents to that. And then go on and just tell them for each of those categories what you can do to, to lower that cost for that section. And actually, as I went through here, there's a big section of toilets, washers, showers, faucets. And uh, so those four are literally grouped together. So you can give a couple of, uh, of examples there, uh, specifically the water-wise, the low flow fixtures. And uh, obviously, you got to include an environmental message too that it's also good for the environment. I mean, but again, we're, we're we're focusing on the pocketbook because the communication that it's sort of being mailed with is is a rate increase, so it's, it's going to hit them in the pocketbook. Um, and then on the second page, there really it's just uh, an example of uh, how you can save. You know, you say faucets from four thousand gallons to three thousand. You save whatever it is, two, four, three percent and then put a dollar value on that. And then uh, the back page or the last page really is just using graphics, uh, graphics images and charts. So you can look at it and get the idea of what, how to conserve your water, how to, how to, how to preserve your, your um, save some expense money on your, on your water utility. Um, so these are just suggestions. I mean, this is just made to be a discussion. I mean, it's not a, certainly a piece or anything, but um, you guys look into anything? I mean, I thought this was excellent, what you did. It's excellent. Um, my wife called about our water bill, and I was surprised. She was told that $30 of stormwater fixed, 30 or so dollars was fixed for sewer, and water was, is that what the only thing's going up, or is storm and sewer going up also? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I originally thought sewer was related to gallons used, but she was told it was a fixed charge. I don't know it's true. I mean, you call, I hate, call a city of Fort Myers Beach three times, you get three different answers. You, usually the charge is based on usage because I know if you, like, most municipalities, you have a leak, you know, your hose, or a pipe break, and then you use, you know, thousands and thousands of gallons of water, you can go to the uh, people and say, you know, prove them it, it was this, so that water did not go into the storm, into the sewer. They'll give you a break on the sewer. Right, and it's like they give you an exemption for filling a new pool, or if something happened, it had a crack, and it or did it drain it, then they, they you can call, and they'll give you an exemption on your. That's what I water. thought, but that's not what my wife was told. Yeah. Would be a surprise. Sewer charge. <laughs> Would be a surprise. You have a house, you get charged a certain amount. This is what she was told. Yeah. So, I guess you can. I mean, you can. You can call Christy here. Um, I don't know who my wife called. Yeah, who who would we talk to to find out? I'd say. I mean, what I'd like to know is just what what's the charge per? I think it's by thousand gallons. I did look online, and there's a rate sheet that you guys were looking at. It's up to at. six thousand. It's up to six thousand is one rate, and it's then a break, from six thousand right? and one per, to twelve thousand is another. But it's um, six dollars something per thousand gallons. Yeah, but now, it, go, it goes up slightly the more you use. Right, and then once you, you, you exceed 6,000, then you have a new rate for, for right. 6,000. It's a pretty right. slight it's increase. Steps. Yeah, yeah. And where are most people? Are most people in which category? Like, does the average house use? I don't know. The average house uses about, the, the target, they say, is 4,000 gallons. But we have, we have an odd thing here. We have a lot of condos that are all on one meter. Yes. Really, yes. and we also have condos that are on individual meters, and then right. we have, of course, houses, and we have, you know, duplexes, and we have all kinds of different sizes and shapes of things. Yeah, here it's two hundred fifty-five a day is what this consumer reports is. It's saying the chart shows water usage in the average U.S. household, which taps about two hundred fifty-five gallons per day. Yeah. This is twenty fifteen. 
Is that in the house use? It all depends if they're, if it's just in the house use also. That, you know, like yeah. I tried no, to play with these numbers too, and it, it includes lawns too. Yeah, there's a lot. So have to take a lot of just in house and then they have exterior and then this one. I mean, again, I was just looking for an image that would give us a, something to talk about. This one shows lawns are 29% and then everything past that literally excluding maybe leaks and others are indoors. So they didn't seem to me very generous. The 6,000 gallons leaks, doesn't save average, enough. On average, 10% of water is lost to leaks. I believe it. I do too, I believe without it. question, yeah. I believe it. We, so, you, we had a toilet that we, we got when we you know, remodeled the house 10 years ago. It seems like I've gone through the guts of it three, four times, and then, you know, it starts, I, I hear it refilling. <laughs> Growing up, shake the potty. Your dad hasn't fixed it yet. Yeah, take, shake <laughs> the handle. Have to go one one thing it. I think it might be worth adding to this, um, I, I really like it, Steve, you did a great job, is that most of the, I think, I think the majority of the cost of the water is the wholesale costs that we pay to Lee County for the water. That's meaning, yeah, I didn't understand so, that then, but. Well, you know, we, you know, whatever people use, the rates are dependent on usage for both us, the town, and for the user. Well, we, it's a variable rate based on what the town, the overall town's usage, or they buy it like oh, just, year, just at our it. overall costs, the majority of the water system costs are buying the water wholesale. Don't they have a, a, a variable rate with us? We don't pay for that. Oh, well, it's part of the, it goes, the cost that you're charged for your water, the majority of that comes from buying the water in the county. The rest of it is delivering the water to your house. Right. I see what you're saying. And, and there's some infrastructure in there, too, on your water bill, right? There's the... Yeah, and paying for things. Annual thing. or something, yeah. I mean, there's some other fees in there. And the fees if you're water line doing the house, I can say that. I saw a sheet on there. It's like, ting, 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 ting. This town's getting rich on that. Funny. Um, yeah, this is great. I don't know. Um, you know, you can... <coughs> we, I, we, you know, we have, they have the, uh, the information officer that you can be... Talk to and see if a discussion. I mean, I, I again, I just this was approach I took from maybe what intent of what we're trying to do with the rate increase, right? Bill, I mean, it, right. this is exactly would like to try to take that, you know, help, right. help me help you, right? Great, Here, here's the way to basically offset that increase. Yeah, this is increase, a, help you, help you help yourself, you know? right? I didn't realize how much you save with a low flow toilet. I mean, we just put all new toilets in, so we actually were using less than 3,000 gallons a month in our house. Yeah, I, I, I saw that same thing, and I thought, I, I mean, we've had, you know, low flow toilets for a long time, but I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's it's substantial. It's huge. What surprised me was if you use the dishwasher, it only takes three gallons of water, whereas if you wash the dishes by hand, they say it's 27. Yes. Phenomenal difference. Rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. Who's that dishwasher? Yeah. Come to the battle at our house. Yeah. <laughs> Seven, yeah. I mean, those are just some examples on the diet. I can't even met, you know, some of these yeah, graphics some aren't that great ones. when you copy and paste them. One drop a second on your, on your leak bill, they say, is going to cost you $70 a month. 3,000 gallons. Yeah, so landscaping is a big one. So zero scaping is obviously the way to go. A lot of work on to everything else that we're trying to do with using native plants, which require less water. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. thing. That's really thirty percent right. are there. And almost, yeah. almost everything in here is household, right? This last little uh, conserve water with escaping. Right. That's yeah. That's something I couldn't find. Sort of a an image that showed you know outside how you save it with the little factoids all over them. Yeah, uh, but they're you know it's probably out there somewhere. You can make your own. There's, but there's a couple there. But you know I think the majority of people want you know. I mean, and that's not there. on here. On. That I thought it really applies locally is is boats. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, you know, it's probably one of the larger water sources in me. I mean, when we take the water off, you rinse, yeah, you got to rinse that salt water off, and it. I've I've, I've got lower flow, uh, low flow. Sp uh, Whatever you want to call them, hose, uh, yeah, hoses. Basically, the delivery is less, but you also need a, you know a certain quantity of to get that salt off. Six gallons a minute. Yeah, I don't. But you know, I'm pulling these numbers from the internet, so I don't know how accurate that is either. What does it take you? Ten minutes to rinse off your boat? 
Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, well, it's not on and off. I mean, I, you know. 60 gallons? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably right, yeah. Yeah. It's being, and, 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 you know, a lot of, <laughs> I sat in my canal, there's a lot of people, I swear to God, they have it on there for a half an hour. I mean, they're just. But I wonder if there's a way to, like, not to be environmentalist, but isn't there a way to reclaim some of that water? So you're rinsing it. Is there a way to reclaim any of it as you're rinsing it? Well, off? it would be salt. I mean, it would be salt water at that point because you're meant sure. more to get the salt off than even the dirt. I'd say well, the dirt's not going to hurt as much as the salt long term. So you, you don't know, want it to go in your garden. I don't. It's I don't use. I rarely. I mean, do you oat soap. Yeah. Oat soap, even. I mean, because uh, that it, takes the wax off. I, well, there's third or fourth. Here's one that don't. Yeah. Uh, I just had my boat ceramic coated, and that's that's a different issue. Yeah, that goes into the canal. So yeah, I was just trying to figure out if there was a way to help reclaim or resalvage some of that water. Yeah, well, I agree. Probably but I mean, there's still people that hose off their driveways. I mean, you're probably better well, off um, trying to reclaim I mean, the rainwater than you are California. Water. You know, and the Colorado people are screaming all their water out there, hosing down their driveways in the desert. I, 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 I worked with out there. Anyway, so but again, that would need work. I mean, did anybody else find anything interesting or or different approach or is this something I pass along to the CIO and ask her what? Lots of stuff. It's just how do we put it all together is the big question. Right. Well, I think the approach, and as you said, we want yeah. something that's going to be succinct and eye catching. I only have, I mean, this is on, one, I mean, this is not very in-depth, but it's one, two, three pages, so whatever you have to put in, it's going to have to be a third of that. A third of that, yeah, which is, I mean, you've yeah, seen so. brochures, you can get that smaller print, but uh, I think charts are the way to look at it. So, I mean, Greg, you're the perfect example, that caught your eye, you thought, yeah. holy crap, I mean, that's... Uh, on 15, 18 percent here, but from go, going from 33 to, to nine gallons per year is consider it. Yeah. Almost an 18. I wonder how many old thirsty toilets there are out there. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been low flow for a long time. Yeah. So anyway. Or let's just say, let's pass it along to the, uh... should we meet with her? Should I meet with her? Um, you know, let me, maybe, let me talk to Roger. Yeah, tell him what you think, show him what we got, and. Let's see if we want to, you know, there's a resources, a town resources that we can use to try to dig this and put it into. Yeah, I'm not a graphic designer. I mean, I could, you literally could put something together. So you, I think you probably want to lean toward professional. And, you, know, it's just... you know, some of the, some of them are just letters. They put out, I think, like the beginning of fertilizer season or less. I, I think I found one of those when I was looking online. Yeah. Next, so. Yeah, I think you highlight in each category, just the, the biggest bang for your buck. I mean, you wouldn't go through and say, here's nine for toilets or something. One low flow leaks. Just walk around the dang house and figure out what's leaking. Give yourself 10%. Because once you're going to do the right thing. I want to find that if a toilet tank is leaking, then I'll turn off the water source. Pretty well. Amazing. If it does, it goes down pretty fast. The sand, I think the sand. And clogs everything. So hard water to the calcium buildup. I think too this so they've just gone through in water system where they have stirs up a lot of a lot of sediments, a lot of debris. Oh yeah, I clogged my valve on my water maker, the sink and the toilet was running after they did that. They put the little thing there saying we're gonna mess with the water. Have a plumber come and check it out, or you gotta live with <laughs> live with what you get. Uh. Oh, where's that leave us? Um, you're going to talk to Roger about it. Yep. I have a list of water saving ideas. 
Okay, yeah. They're not original, they're copied, so, but if anybody wants them. Well, those would be used for con the content. This is just a format, I think, so. Want to hear them? Sure, I'd love to. Water saving ideas. Run dishwasher only when full. When hand washing dishes, use bowls to hold water rather than letting water run. Defrost fruit in fri food in fridge, not under running water. Large bottle of water in the fridge for drinking rather than letting it run. Soap pans with stuck on food rather than letting the water run. Wash fresh fruits and veggies in a bowl of water rather than letting the water run. When you're in the bathroom, five minute shower uses less water than bathing. Upgrade to dual flush toilets and high efficiency shower heads. Throw tissues in trash rather than flushing them. Turn off water when lathering hands or washing hair in between rinses. Rinse razor in sink filled with hot water rather than running water. In the laundry room, wash full loads or adjust your water levels. Reuse towels. Upgrade to a high efficiency washer. Outdoors. Plant native plants or plants with low watering needs. That's your zero scaping. Collect rainwater in a barrel to water plants. Install drip irrigation around trees and shrubs. Reduce size of lawns. Keep grass height about two inches tall to shade roots and hold moisture. Fertilize minimally, if at all. Mulch plants to conserve moisture. Group plants with like watering needs together. Hydrozones. Sweep patios, sidewalks, decks with broom rather than hosing. Bathe pets outdoors where plants need water. Do not overfill pools as it will splash out. Pool cover will reduce water loss. Install instant water heater near kitchen. Just a few things that we all could do when we go home. I really like the one about turning off the water when you're lathering because now we're supposed to be in the habit of longer lathering and if you let the water run for... Right. And these things are habits. You know, when a habit is... You can just start a new one shower. remembering it. Okay. I'll soap up, rinse, and then... Very good, thank you. But I don't know if we, uh, if they want to insert that in their bill or just put it on one of our informative papers. Well, the council will advise us, Roger's okay. team. They're to, we're idea men and we're, ladies. We're both idea people. Okay, so 456, for fees. Any other, should I close, I'll close the discussion on uh, WaterWise? To close it. And uh, Good Citizen Award. A Murphy. He's got a Murphy. I have a good idea for one, but I don't, I don't have the okay from the person yet. They're hesitating. But I know someone who has made a, a rainwater collector with three barrels stacked up in some plastic tubing that he's put together. And it's collecting the rain from his roof, all the runoff. And um, he's going to use that on his garden. But I don't know why it, it might be. He's got X's or something. He really doesn't want any publicity, <laughs> although I'm <laughs> trying to convince him. <laughs> right. Well, but other than that, I have nothing. The Murphy. Okay. That's a, that goes on the potential then. Right. Yeah, I think that. it would be a good one, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are the ones in the bank? Give me that because I, I have. Um, uh, we've got resistant. two. Um, without, hang on, we only have two. We've got the turtle mural. Hey, if we don't have one today, I think that, that might be a time. Yeah, this might one. be the time to use it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the second one's an old one. It's from the, uh, the two Minnesotans that uh, came down and saved the bird on the beach called Crow. So it's, I've got a photo, and I've got their names. So, oh, and they're, where they're from, I think, um, Anka, but they're somewhere. That was just one I, I thought would be a good one for the bank forever. What was the lo last one? Um, that there was uh, a, a mother and her daughter um, found a bird. Actually, it was weird. It was a, I think it was like a, um, like a whippoorwill or a chuck whip, you know, uh, widows, whatever it is. Whiskers. I looked it up later. Um, not, it wasn't a bird I had expected to see. It almost looked like it had whiskers. You know, it had had. Um, I don't know, whip, whippoorwills aren't very easy to find, but it had a whippoorwill face on it. But anyway, they didn't know what to do with it, so we instructed them that they could call crow. We were walking on the beach, and they did, and they came and got it. And um, so I got a photo. 
and I got a story, but uh, and the other one we had was the mural that um, that's on uh, I, I can't remember what near what axis that was, but there's no, a, one of the newer houses. They have a huge turtle mural they put on the yeah up there. On the wall, which I think is gorgeous for that wall. I mean, otherwise you're going to be looking at a big old white wall. Do we know who owns that house? Do not. No. You know the address? I could have it by tomorrow, right? Yeah, no, offhand, no. No. Or exactly where it's at. It's just north, is it north of Newton? North of Newton. Or just, just barely, it's though. It's closer to you, but, but I don't remember. Between Connecticut and... Could be wrong. One or two houses north of Hercules? Yeah, it's in that area. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's not my normal. Got turf, it every day. So. But. Those are the two we have. Does anybody else have any Murphys? Get yeah, one for next month. We'll find one for next month. Sarah no, and I will to work stop. together. I, we'll yeah, find I just one. have to grab. I, I like the idea of beach. hunting for them. You know, something that's that's hot on our agenda. Well, I mean, I have another one, and that's on the water savings. Is I've got uh, my neighbor plumbed his downspouts into his pool. That's a good one. That's a good to, one. Um, to refill it. I mean, because that's brutal. The neighbor cross is always just constantly saying, hey, "I gotta put three inches in my pool." You know what that costs. <laughs> Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. How much but, does it uh, cost? Um, I forgot what he said. I mean, it's how many gallons? Twenty dollars? No, oh, no, sixty. It's, it's probably, it's, yeah, at least sixty or seventy dollars. Oh, really? Like, every time yeah. you need to top it off. Yeah, he's always praying for rain. He's like, oh, I only got a half an inch. Oh. So would a pool put cover stop pool, that? I tell him, put your pool cover on. Yeah. Also, a really good source of water in Florida is not safe from you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we discussed that. Discuss that, that. Yeah. Plants. We we, uh, we were trying to do a thing. We have a fountain. I was going to try to move the water so that it comes out of the condo. It had to move up. It was a little tricky, but get into the fountain and keep the fountain full. Oh, and, that's and a great it's idea. I said, well, how much water is it? And I got this little bucket, and I put it under there. And, like, every day it's probably gallons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think Renee said they get a five-gallon bucket full every day, right? Yeah. Yeah, Megan takes that from the condensate from the air conditioner, and she takes it and irrigates all the plants in the backyard. That's the kind of thing we need to get out there because these are the little things that I think people would do and, if, and if they you have a pool, were aware of it. Of yeah. a condensate light, you know, you, it, may, you're, it may not be anywhere near, maybe in the side of the house. Or something. Yeah. If you can get that condensate line down to your pool. People have the concept that that's dirty water or something that somehow is coming out of. Oh. Yeah, but it's it's gray water. If you're sure, you wouldn't drink it, but there's yeah, no, yeah. you're not gonna. Yeah. It's not potable. It's but... whatever. Yeah, it's whatever's. You know, mm -hmm. we need to get that idea across. Yeah. Yeah, we've got all kinds of wires running. Is it dirty? I thought it was really clean because it's essentially <coughs> standing in the the air conditioning a while. Yeah, oh, it's okay. not like it's... mine just got plugged because <clears throat> the green algae sludge. grows in there. You have to stick to your shop back and suck it out. Every so often, I do that every. Yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's not problem. definitely not potable, but it's not going to hurt any of the plants. Hmm. Okay, so um, what do you think on the Murphy? Turtle mural. I think it's. Go, uh, yeah, it's I right guess it's season. time. Perfect. Sure. Yeah, yeah we're we're having a good turtle time. season, and. Okay. Do we need to ask permission? Um. To know who's responsible, the idea is we're giving it. Just to wanted somebody. to check the address to see if there's any lighting violation. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good thing. Right, right. That'd be something. Um, that's why the turtle fell there. It's it's disoriented and doesn't know how to get <laughs> to the water. Right. So um, move forward on that. Uh, can we get the you want to get the address for me, Mar uh, Yeah. Rose and fix it to me, and I can. We can send it to Chad because he's got Chad, it. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that tomorrow if, or tonight. Next, we'll see who it is. See if they have any violations. I had the, I had the thought today because we we're going down the beach and I looked at. It, I was like, I wonder what address that is because I know what it looks like in the dark, but I obviously don't see the mural. It'd be nice to actually get the homeowner's name so they could actually sure. get yeah. the kudos for it. So. Also get all kinds. I'll go knock on the door. Permission Maybe I'll, as a term, I'll go knock on the door and see. Maybe even mention here. the artist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mention who it, it is. And yeah, somebody did it. I wonder if it's the same person that did the uh, Latin Hysteral. They don't look the same. No, this one, no. I, I don't think enough. so. I think I've only seen the one on, on the beach. Could be, but I don't think so. so. All right, so I'll, uh, 
I'll take the responsibility to go knock on the door, see where they are, get all the information, and send it to the August. And how's that? So, on this subject, um, I could use one now. You sent the email that's you know that basically has the deadlines. So you are you gonna? In the packet, who? How would you like to? How would you? I've been doing it so far until I figure we get a system where everybody understands it has to be submitted and stuff. I had okay. to nag Mary Rose for a picture; she didn't want to have a picture. I sent it yesterday. I, did, I saw that come in. Okay, oh, so gosh. was that coming up real? Uh, I can't yeah, remember yeah, what the date it. was on that. But, uh, and I, we we missed the because usually the the paper that comes out today is the one that has a July. Was it July? Oh. We missed that, but it's okay. I think we'll just. Well, I can put a generic 9th. thing there instead of saying when the next meeting is, and we'll try to get the next one in before the next Murph meeting. So by September 4th, for Jennifer Rusk, we'll get it on, on track, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So maybe, maybe if you have the, what, what I prefer to do, just as far as order, because both of you are going to come for the next meeting, so give me the Minnesota people. I can get that story in right away, and then we'll do the turtle, because it takes a little For the September 4th one, you're saying? For the, um, need one yeah, for September fourth. September fourth, because the August 9th, did that go in? No, you didn't have one. You're saying, right? We're we're a little behind on that. I need to get one out right away. I need a Murphy for it. August 9th. for 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 August. For August. Okay, I'll send you that one. Okay. I'll bird one, then we'll do the bird one for August. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to vote on that. Uh, all in favor, uh, make a motion. We uh, we crush the Bert Murphy <laughs> bill for this next print edition. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Carries. Should we, should we get one for the turtle for the August or for the September? And then we're done no, with I'm that too. Unless we have a better one, but no, we, we didn't. Oh, we're, it'd be before the meeting. Ah, correct. Okay. So, um, I make a motion. Uh, C. Johnson chair makes a motion to <laughs> use the turtle mural near Hercules on the beach for our Murphy in September. For the second. Okay. Provided there's no problems. <laughs> Correct. No violations. Otherwise, then we'll have to do, call, call an audible. I can't call an audible, can I? Because everybody has to vote, vote, vote for it. But uh, yeah, all in favor? Oh, second. Yeah, seconded. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so the bill will go in in September for our next meeting. Woo. Okay, so last uh, real item uh, is the members' items and reports. We'll start. And then with... we have no Murphy in the bank, right? Um, if we've no, used we up just... all our reserve. <laughs> we just, uh, yeah, we just, we just withdraw. Uh, we just withdrew the, uh, we, uh, the bankrupt entire balance. Uh, bankrupt on Murphy. We're, we're all going to go to town this next month and load it back up. So. Anything, Sarah, this month uh, for um, reports, items, any issues? Awesome. Um. Oh, just a quick turtle time report that oh, yeah, it's right. been a, a dynamite season, 131 nests. Uh, many wow. of them have hatched. The, uh, the good thing about it is even uh, a goodly number of those that got washed over did not get washed out did not lose all of the eggs in those nests. We, uh, about a third of them probably came out. We, we did have a few nests that were submerged. But in general, it's a, it's a banner year. We're all smiling. And uh, the other good... The hatch rate thing. The hatch rate, I, I don't have the exact statistics. And I think that those flooded nests are, are going to make us, our numbers not as, uh, as high as they have been in other years. But... Um, those nests that did not get totally submerged were terrific. Um, and there weren't as many either, I think, no. in the submerged nest. Small window, yeah. I thought, right. yeah. And the good thing is, um, Eve and I were digging a nest the other day down by Flamingo, and we saw the track of a little gopher tortoise. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Yes. And, uh, That's a big deal. Isn't it? And, and we're thinking that it might be part of a clutch, right, because there's three or five in a go for tortoise clutch, so maybe they are spreading down to that area. And that's why it's really good that we're going to try and take care of that dune, because oh, it, say, it, it yeah. would be, they would be more than welcome down there. In previous years, we saw the go for tortoise tracks on Gulf, uh, the access there and all. I think even um, 
And by Flamingo, too, across the... Yeah. You just saw the movie right. map, but I hadn't seen them all year, so when you told me about that, I thought that was fantastic. I'd love it. That is it. good, definitely good news. Uh, well, for Tortoise Den. All right, so uh, I have no mem uh Well, I just had the kudos, really, to Chelsea and Roger for that street lighting RFP, so that's out, and um, just a fantastic job. And uh, also, and to let you guys know that, that our information was incorporated into it. And one other item, um, maybe to Chad, is that there's a question about the short-term rental agreement. Does that provide, and I know you're not an expert on that, but does that provide for turtle lighting infractions? That would be a civil matter between the renter and the rentee. But we, the question is, is do they have the one hour sort of notification before finding them? The short term rental, I mean, Bill, I think you're. Uh, I thought you I meant with it in terms of sea turtle lighting. Well, it is. I mean, so what they're saying is, is does that fall under the short term rental agreement that says if there's a problem, usually I think it's a, a nuisance, correct? If there's a nuisance. And short-term rental, everybody has to have a contact, and you call the contact, the town or whoever calls a contact, and they have the right to, well, they have to fix it, but um, it has to be, but they have a grace period before they actually get fined or something. Well, so. yeah, the whole nuisance and nu nuisance abatement board is very specific. There's only a, a short list of things that you In the short-term rental? In, in a nuisance, it considered, a, well, a lot of things are considered a nuisance. Pretty much, there's two ways you can enforce anything. Is that by this kind of thing, or just by ordinance? So if if I don't, I don't quite what your what your point is, but you know, if they have a problem with lighting, then we have a way to handle that. Right. So the it was brought. It was um, a conversation actually that Cindy had with a person that they you know, didn't want to be notified, but is involved with the rental organization. And the question is, is is they had they had a fine, but they asked her. They said, well. Isn't this taking, you know, doesn't the short term rental agreement provide, essentially, doesn't the time, if, if you notify them, don't they get a chance to, to correct the infraction before you get fined? I mean, to me, I, I think in no way. I mean, who's we, 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 your job to. It's hunt been them? my practice to send warnings first. Of course, right. But this is, again, this is under short term. You're probably asking the wrong people. I guess I need to get the short term rental agreement. They, a person shouldn't know what's underneath that in the short-term rental agreement, right? Isn't there a, there's an ordinance, a short-term rental ordinance now that says that you have to have somebody that, you have to have a phone number. Yeah. That's a big, a big to-do, right? You have to pay to be registered and. It was, and there's limits to what you can rent. I don't know if the, the lighting is, is a different part of the ordinance. Correct. So the question is, is, is lighting in that ordinance as well? And I, I would think not because we have a turtle lighting ordinance. I'm saying I don't think you want to really No, I mean they that's... pay people to go through the uh, the town codes and eliminate duplication so this would be duplication right so I, I mean I, I didn't think it had what had in a merit um, there's also but on a side note that was different when I saw in that uh, neighborhood um, I don't know, uh, my watch or something there's a store maybe it's next door oh that's it. yeah and next door, there was somebody that was, I don't know who it was, too. It was, uh, and they were saying, hey, I got notified. They got, the, the town saw my light was on. Why didn't they just notify me? Instead of at 11, them. At 11 or 12 Well, exactly. Night. Yeah. Midnight, two, you know, three and four in the morning or five, whenever, you know, in the more early in the morning. I'm thinking that's not the town's job is to go and notify everybody, right? I mean, they there's reasonable, it. there's usually, I don't know if it's in the sea turtle ordinance, but usually I see like reasonable hours at reasonable hours that you, you first code and I wouldn't consider just would not walk up on private property at, you know, even at nine o'clock. I mean, it's just, right. if I see them out on the balcony, yes, I've given many people, hey guys, it's sea turtle. You yelled at people all the time. I'm not yelling at them. I mean, I, I just, know, we, you know, I'm saying we do. But, you know, it's, um, but, uh, if I, if I have the opportunity to educate and notify people are outside, even if they're on the beach and I see they're, you know, hey, are y'all staying up there? Turtle season, you're waving fireworks. Hey, guys, it's sea turtle season. Flashlights. Um, right. I even gave, you know, you know, I felt bad because, you know, they're showing their little daughter a 
see animals right. or whatever right. and say, hey, yeah, just, just take this red flashlight, where are you staying at, I'll pick it up, you know, that kind right. of thing. So um, if people are there to educate them, by all means, otherwise they just get a letter. Right, right, mm -hmm. exactly. I think both of these situations are, 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 are can't be managed unless you're going to have uh, hire some co-enforcement just to go up and down the beach telling people to turn to turn the lights off. Well, the onus is on the property owner, it. and therefore the, the the onus you know the onus from our perspective it's the property owner that is responsible, and the onus is on the property owner to hold you want to hold their renter their tenant that they're making money off of responsible for any just like if you destroy the room you're responsible for for repairing it. That's I mean years now. Especially if you've been living on the beach. So anyway, that was why did, that was see, why did you I specify had. short term rental? That was the that's why I brought it up. That was the angle and I said I, I think I we've know. had a recent is, disorientation at a short term rental. Is that why it was brought oh that, that would be my guess. Yeah. 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 It's a five, I think it was a five. Yeah, it's a big one. Well, it's the owner's responsibility to them. tell the short term rental what the rules are. Uh, Until we come back to, to make sure that their lighting is not a violation of the very clear, lines. yeah. That would what, what you have to do. And I think they roll their dice when they 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 allow people to come in because every week there's a new person there and they leave, you know, whether it's a drapes open or whatever, but there's certainly lights, uh, exterior lights are a no brainer and those are still a problem. Right. Exterior lights are the biggest problem. Just getting people to simply either close the curtains. Correct. That's the what biggest. I encourage owners to do is just make it foolproof. Um, the fifteen percent. Well, anyway, that's. Uh, Are you making headway, Chad? I don't think the short term. I think so. I mean, I'm I'm impressed by the community. Okay, I, good. I think, oh yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot more good things to be said than than bad. I mean, there's always there's always issues, and and just to the point of of uh, Mr. Bill uh, you know, educating. There's a constant turnover. So educating is a yeah. random yeah. job. So. It, it always I have another good. Murphy. Are, you're not getting discouraged, Story. are you? <laughs> it, it's actually it's Lahaina, we need of all things. Lahaina. Hmm? Lahaina. I was talking to people there, and they said, you know what? Well, a check-in was kind of slow, but I was okay with it because I, the lady, this lady we were talking to, she said, I was okay with it because they were taking extra, they took an extra literally 10 minutes Discuss exactly what has to be done to to make sure that that they're abiding by the the, the turtle lighting ordinance. I mean, there's a lot of good to be said. A lot of people are taking it so seriously. That's a, that, that's a best practice, is what that is, and yeah. because they've been, you know, I mean, I know I'm. Of course, like a Murphy were, to me. They were a perennial problem, and they nailed it. I mean, they got lighting outside. It seems like the windows are closed. Oh, so, anyway. One I was thinking of is um, Sue and Jim Morris, and, and Sue is the one who is leading the, um, the the speed reduction for that south part of the island, mm. which I think is good for manatees, mm. for their wildlife, and they've been working really hard at it. Yeah. That may be another possibility for Murphy too. Definitely, that sounds good. Yeah. The other day, yeah. 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 And we're swimming. Are you here. typically uh, citizens? Yeah, we Typically, well, yeah. we've had them. We have done organizations like we did the. Um, it's it's you know local. Yeah, we do out of the towners too. We used to do a lot of trap people that pick up trash. I mean, I was just thinking of Bethany over in uh, that's been managing that uh, FWC, the San Carlos Shorebirds. It, it is her job. Yeah, that's that's one thing we haven't done. Like you know, where we you know, we're not giving one to Chad or to I'm not, I'm you know not members of MRF or, or you know town councilors that kind of right. stuff. We've been mostly it's citizens, someone who is observed. Sure. Yeah. Something. You know, we have the um, Mulholland Award for longer term stuff too. So. Right. Long meeting here, guys. We won't make a. We won't. <laughs> I thought it was me. It was a great meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not going to turn it into a bill. Maybe one more item for the next time. All this trash from this construction is brutal. Oh, yeah. I mean, the trash. Now, I'm not saying the, the debris they're leaving because they're working, but just the all the food containers and the drink yeah. containers. Just unbelievable the amount of trash. 
Oh, well, plastic from the... Um, oh, we got a lot of that when they were going through our neighborhood. Yeah, plastic that, that they use to cover the expansion joints. It's plastic. I mean, they don't pull those out. They just integrate into microplastics. And then they also have, there's coatings on those yellow bumpy things that are at the crosswalks. Don't pull those off. It just, plastic film just disintegrates. There's, there's those reflective um, embedded things they put in the road, you know? In everywhere because they pull them up and take them out and it's just it's getting to a point where it's everywhere. So um, I guess the meeting's not closed yet, but I mean that's something. Uh, we, I mean, but, citizen, uh, I suppose I could bring yeah. it up, but as a group, I'd say let's get to the the uh, who's the lady that the organization that does a PR for the road Polnar? construction. And I, I would I would just contact Polnar. her directly. You know. Yeah, I should just I should just do yeah. that because it's just yeah I think she'll so respond. Oh, bad! It's getting so bad. Uh, Take some pictures. Yeah, uh, you know what? I got a I got a pollution file here. <laughs> 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 photos, I really do. An I got album, a, your own personal photos. album. It's like that green that that green. Yeah, anyway, I won't. Uh, <laughs> you know, it makes I think it makes enforcement so much easier if you have a photo. They're just someone's word. Son, that's just really unnecessary. One time I saw a guy walking down, you know, like the flagger. He, walked, he went down and he had a little thing and was picking up some stuff in the middle of the lanes. But hides are just unbelievable. Tucked underneath all the bushes and stuff, just garbage, tons of it. Fires and pipe and chunks of plastic. It's uh, but a real clean beach for that. Mm. Road anyway. Oh. My agenda. Wait, what do we have to? We got to close the meeting, correct? Um, set agenda for next meeting, and then yeah, set agenda. Sorry, I got really way ahead of myself. I'm so used to the comment, but kind of thing. Uh, okay, set the agenda for next meeting. We. Um, I think we're going to talk about the. We've got the sliders again. Yep, sliders. Any sliders? We have. Uh, so many are list to town council. Will they have something back to us by then that we have to respond to, or no? Um, get some, probably some feedback, and then maybe just through the channels, we'll get some feedback. Yeah, like you know, if Steve comes to present, then he can come and present what happened. And yeah, so yeah. that'll happen before the next meeting. I think there's there's one or maybe two council meetings in there now. So, but one is better off going for the. I can look at the calendar. You're better off for not going for the next one because then you, if you could, if you submit something, you if you you have a week before the meeting to do that. So, if you do it this next one, you won't have enough time. But you're saying I need to make. I mean, I put a PPT together. Is that how they usually do it? Oh, or I would just a piece of paper. Something that's going to go. You can if you want. I'm sure you're working with slides. So shuffling slides. I know. I know you I like mean, PowerPoint, just, so you want to go I PowerPoint. Just, that's, fine. that's all I used. To, I mean, it was really good. That's how you communicated. Yeah, I mean, everything was on slides. Yeah. Everything, everything. Right. So then, there's a meeting on the 17th, and there's a meeting on the 7th. That sounds good. So, so, so as far as the agenda goes, it's so September 10th and. No, so you have the 17th of August and then September 10th, I believe, is a budget in September, I believe, or the 17th. Night, nighttime budget. We'll be here on the 17th, so, would, so it's got to be the next one, so it'll be September. I think September's are right, are at night. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's all the budget stuff. At night? Or they're, oh, it's ineligible? At night. I'm not it's sure it. if it's, you know. It has to be uh, after 5. It's a budget for people who work to be able to do the statute. See, so that's not a problem. I can come to the council meeting at night. I believe so. I've never right, been through this process, but I assume we still have regular to go through. So, okay, so they'll do. It's just not only budget; they do a regular general meeting. But you know, yeah. reach out to Michelle. She'll know. She's the okay. one who knows all that. She's the oracle. Great. December. Okay. Yeah. So we'll assume then that put the. Council feedback on there? Yeah, or just you leave it on there and then if you have feedback, you can give it. Feedback. And we'll get this from our original. 
Um, what else is carried over? Um, should we leave the water wise on there so we can have a discussion or not really? No. Mark there for now. I would until it's done. Okay, so we'll put water wise back on there. Hence, water wise. Nice. Uh, so I see. I guess that's it. Does anybody what? have any else items? Do you have anything, Chad? That uh, I mean, it's up to y'all. If you wanted to discuss, you mentioned dunes. I think that's a you know dune education. I don't know if that's. Preempting y'all's, you know, trying to set y'all's priorities, whatever. So yeah, no, I mean, I'd say let's throw it on there. Then also, I think then in the future, I think we would start taking those back from the council, and then we mm -hmm. obviously then we start working on those. So I'm sure I have a huge agenda. So it's, that's not having too big of a agenda now. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Just and you, you can two hours. You can consider doing another um, demonstration project if you can find some property owners who want to put in plants. Trick is finding the property owners. Mm. It's the last time the town paid for it because the plants themselves are not particularly expensive. A demo plot, you're saying? We did a demonstration project. We had four houses and a, and a beach access. And, you know, maybe, you know, Chad oh, knows an area that dunes, yeah. that uh, would probably be right for that. Um, we, we also tried to do a couple in Newton Park, um, and both times it got washed away. And one thing I didn't get a chance to look at was flip my yard or flip your my yard on the oh yeah yeah I think I put so that I'm out. still going to check that out so maybe I'll come up later but yard that's awesome okay so doing uh, okay we have the sliders council feedback water wise education and the doing education. Miss anything? Anything else? All right, let's get on. So, let it move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Have a great evening. Again, sorry for the long meeting here. I try to. Rose going kind to of just snuck that in. Discussion, though. It's good discussion. We're still. <laughs> We're still getting we're still getting our new committee legs together. We're still melding as a group. You're doing a fine job, Steve. You're doing awesome. That's getting a little easier. Hard to follow in Bill's footsteps, but you're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, that's right. How, how many years did you do it, Bill? How many years were you on uh, chairman of What's a good day for you? Oh my god. What's a good day? Any day. It doesn't matter. Okay, I think running for council and we have to get out of it.